Hello and welcome to the final ever race of the Touring Masters at TouringProSeries.com and this race is going to be held as the fourth season, seventh race of the World Touring Masters here at Mount Panorama. The title is already been sewn up by Jesper Torborg at the last event at Oran Park, but plenty to play for here as well. Can Eric Devine get his third win of the season? Can Toby Davis finally get his season win? Will Jesper Torborg make it four wins, uh, for five wins even, from seven races this season? Of course, Mount Panorama always throws up plenty of surprises and plenty of fun and games. So let's uh, just show you the standings before this event. And as I was saying, Jesper Torborg has already sold, sold up that particular uh, title there. 33 points ahead with just 32 available. So just secured before this event. So he becomes the first ever Touring Pro Series driver to win back-to-back -back championships. No one's ever done it before in all the 17 seasons we've had before. Eric Tavite there in second place. Strong second place, but not assured of Ross McGregor. So he needs a good run here today to make sure he does well in that. Toby Davis back in fourth after missing a couple of events. Uh, uh, missing Oran Park, should I say, and uh, also crashing out, of course, at Trois Rivières. Tommy Arleda in fifth, Matteo Ban in sixth. You can see it's very close and tight, actually, in that area. There, well, the Vec will not be racing here today, unfortunately. He's still recovering from that broken collarbone after falling off his scooter on some ice on the way to work. So, uh, Orban, Rivio, Strauss, Ferreira, Chris Butcher makes his return to the series after a two-race hiatus. Yunt uh, will all be fighting to move up a few positions. So although they may only be 4th, 5th and 6th, or maybe 17th and 9th in the championship, those are still important milestones for these drivers to try and accomplish. And we got, of course, Asnahi. And Wiesen Müller and Lennon have both came in at Toro Vieira event and both done very well indeed, as you can see by their points. So they've moved up in just two races in this championship. It remains to see how far they can move up any, if they can move up any further, though, of course. It's quite a big gap up to Yunt and the boys above. Well, this is the event here today. This is the 19th of December, of course, and this is the Bathurst event, Mount Panorama, the track we are racing on. And, of course, Mount Panorama has been used many times uh, in the Touring Pro Series, of course, in the Virtual V8 Supercar season. It's been the season ender for all of the seasons, of course, in that particular league. But also, it's been the season ender in the past three seasons in the World Touring Masters. And also, it was a race in the first season as well. Um, so, plenty of history here at the Mount Panorama event. We're looking forward to drivers adding their name to that roster, which includes people like VR and Torborg and Strauss. And drivers that are, Kaitley and Dave are, of course, the most recent winners at this track at the end of the Virtual VX Supercars 2012 season, of which there will be an announcement very soon of the calendar and the format for the 2013 season. A bit of a Christmas present for you guys also there. So let's get back into the action here. Let's uh, quickly show you the pre-practice. We've got seven minutes to go until qualifying. And actually, quickly before, before we jump into the action, actually, let's quickly show you what we've got coming up just before Christmas. Just before Christmas, early Christmas present, we've got the third round of the World Supertech Series, Brasilia. And there's been some driver changes, some driver additions as well. We have lost the Interlagos Motorsport team. Mysteriously just disappeared from our, uh, our entry list. So we lost Lotfi, Nascimento and Sene. So um, we've got no idea why, they, why they've left. And it's pretty poor form that they have done anyway. But uh, we've, <laughs> we've lost, uh, lost those three. But we have gained Van Dorn and Davilar. So Stoffer Van Dorn and Peter Davilar will be teaming up to replace Lasse Sorensen and Alexander Lauritsen in the Walk Racing main team. Uh, Lauritsen has left that team to join Twister, a non-championship scoring, of course, now, but part of that Twister organisation, and Sorensen is also now an independent driver as well. But, uh, of course, Karen Badara Bogdan has replaced them with um, two drivers of extending calibre, Stoffel van Dorne, who will be driving in the former, former Renault 3.5 series in 2013 for four Tech Motorsports, the championship winning team of last year, and is, of course, the 2012 uh, Euro Cup Formula Renault 2.0 champion and F1 beckons for the very talented Belgian. Of course, we've got Peter Davila, who is a two-time TPS champion in this particular series, World Touring Masters in Season 2. And, of course, he's just won the Virtual Mini Challenge, uh, the inaugural season, uh, which, of which the second season will be happening in 2013 also. So, there's all your news in brief for you. 
So look out for uh, even more action as uh, Keith Lee uh, et al are joined by Van Dorna and Dave are at the next event. Be sure not to miss that one. So let's go into the game now. I did promise you the game, and here we are. We're in the action at the moment. And as you can see, it's Eric Tveit, who is fastest, just gone fastest just a few seconds ago. And that is a qualifying pace there from Eric Tveit. The winner at Oran Park, the winner at Salzburg Ring in that Rover 3500 Vitesse that he's become so uh, accustomed to. We've been so accustomed to look to see him in that car, and of course, become so used to that car as well. Excuse me. And um, he took the win eventually at Oran Park after... Uh, yes, Tog was, was penalised post-race for the two moves which happened, which you, you would have seen on the broadcast if you'd watched. He was penalised for that and demoted back to third, in fact, and he put under Jesper whether he actually already sold up the title, but he had just about. So, Tveit held off Tolborg at Salzburg Ring and held off Tolborg at Oran Park, though Tolborg, of course, did legitimately get past in the end. But that's two, seasons, two wins for Eric Tveit. Our youngest ever TPS winner. These only two wins of his TPS career. He's looking strong for a second one here. Here he is on track at the moment, just as I, uh, just as I say that. Oh, the timing is perfect, Eric. Well done. The timing is perfect as he continues on his way and uh, gets on with his race. So Eric Tveit on with his practice. So Toby Davis there is running off track also in the same place also as well. But he's in an outlap at the moment. Just uh, one of his tyres landed a few drivers go past. Robert Wiesenmüller has acquitted himself well. Also in the Rover since he's come into the series. Rover and the Supra, very much the flavour of the season. The only two cars to win, of course. In fact, there's only two drivers have won. Eric Tveit and Jesper Torborg. Jesper Torborg winning the first three races of the season. Then Eric Tveit the fourth. Then Jesper the fifth. And then Eric Tveit the sixth. As we see Jesper Torborg going to second place. There he is in the Toyota Supra. Also a strong car this season has been the 635. And Yus Ravio has been the, one of the bigger exponents of that particular car. Him and Ross McGregor have been fantastic. Ross was six, sitting third in the championship. Yunus Ravio had his first TPS podium at the last event. So congratulations to him and uh, looking for more for the, from his talented driver. He's got better and better as we go along. He'll also be in the World Super Deck Series at the next event alongside Tommy O'Yala um, in the, in the team Winland. You can tell which country they come from. In Winland entry. Here is Ross McGregor. He's say he's third in the championship after an excellent season once again. And a great season of virtual Vic supercars also. Solid throughout. Ended up finishing third in that one. So Ross McGregor it shows exactly what you can do when you put together a solid season. You get excellent results at the end of it. None of this leading and then crashing. Malarkey for Ross McGregor. He'll get good results day in, day out. And in seventh place, Gary Lennon. In that Toyota Super, as I say, he only came into the into the event at Trois Rivières has acquitted himself well, as we were saying, alongside Robert Wiesenmuller, came in at the same time. Eighth place at the moment is Jonathan Ockerklint, and he'll be very, very pleased with that position right now. If we uh, go to qualifying right now, Ockerklint will be eighth, and he'll be very pleased with that. He's been showing potential lately, has Mr. Ockerklint, so looking for more from him. Ninth place is Matej Orban, who's just um, gone down an escape road, I think, or he's just having a bit of fun doing a few donuts. Matej Orban, the only Volvo of this season, is Bruno Salsa Ferreira, also been... I also had a few good results this season in that BMW 635. As I'm saying, this is the last ever race with this mod in the Touring Pro Series. So, uh, yes, heavy hearts we see this go with. We really do. And we hope that the next mod we use and the next game that we use will be just as entertaining, just as exciting as the last four seasons of wonderful entertainment this mod has given us. Wonderful variety and wonderful action. 11th place moment is Tristan Clark, so he'll be very pleased with that also. We've seen a few, this track is throwing, throwing up a few, uh, few unkind to say, bat markers, but they have been bat markers this season, really. Uh, Tristan Clark has been round, down the lower end of the grid in general, but has been flying here today. Of course, he is from Australia, so we've driven this track hundreds and thousands of times. And Kevin Enderman is 12th at the moment in a fellow Supra, as you can see there he is in the BF Goodrich, number 87 Supra. Here is Jeff Dobbing who also has had some great results, great qualifying at Oran Park from Jeff. 14th place, Jay Adji. He had a difficult couple of races lately, but uh, he'll be looking to try and bounce back here and set himself a good result to end the season with Anders Nielsen. has been a bit off-colour this season in that Holden Commodore. Surprised he's not a bit faster here, but of course he may be just be doing uh, race runs at the moment and will do some soft tyre qualifying runs in a few in a few minutes' time. There's 36 seconds to go into pole. 16th place is Andy Oakley at the moment. Andy Oakley is just guest driving for this final event of the season. He's done plenty of races, of course, in the World Touring Masters. Great to see him back 
and he's back in that Sierra as you can see, as campaigned by uh, Ben Davis last year. 70 plays with Chris Butcher, and uh, he's been struggling a little bit uh, on track at the moment. He's back into the pits. 18th place, Lee Palmer. 19th place is Tony Matthews alongside his... They always seem to be inseparable on track, these two. Andy Bernard and Tony Matthews, both in Alfa Romeos, always seem to be in the same part of the track and the same positions as well. So it's great to see those guys up there as well. David Young just jumped into 13th place there. He's in the uh, formerly campaigned uh, uh, Ford Sierra, should I say, of Evo Simons. And then we've got, of course, Matt Emmons bringing up the rear at the moment. And he's going to have to try. They have not qualified this season so far. So fingers crossed for Matt Emmons that he can qualify here today. So back to the front of the field. Um, oh, another news as well. Our chat box is now hosted at the event, at the, uh, the, um, at the Inside Sim Racing forums. a new chat box there. So make sure you jump into that. If you've got anything to say about the action here today, jump in there. Have a wee discuss about what you think is going to happen. And uh, give you mention later on if I can also as well as the drivers now finally out on track for this qualifying session. And it uh, would be great to, see, to, to know which driver you think is going to get pole position here. Will it be Davis? Will it be Torbo? Will it be Tavite? They seem to be the only three with a realistic chance of making it happen here. And let's go on board now. With, well, go on board with Toby Davis in just a couple of minutes' time. Of course, this is a 6.2-kilometer six, 6 circuit, 23 turns. And this is turn two at Griffin's Bend. And they go up towards the cutting. And um, there's only 20 laps here today. So there can be plenty of action. But 20 laps around here is a long, long way still. 120 kilometers all over, of course. 6.2 kilometer track. So 20 laps here is not the same as 20 laps at Brands Hats in India, for example. It's a good 45 minute race. And looking for maybe a 2.13 to be pole position here. Of course, Toby Davis has known his demons at this particular track. And we're coming up to the section where we all know all too well about uh, this driver. Three races in a row. He crashed here. World Touring Masters Season 2 when he had a, a sniff of, a, of the title. World Touring uh, Virtual Vehicle Supergirl 2011 when he was uh, in around about fourth place in that particular event. And then in World Touring Masters Season 3, of course, last season, when all he had to do was maintain position. And he would have won his first Touring Pro Series title, denying Jesper Torbo, of course, and now gone on to win two of them. So, shows how little things change the course of history. Of course, Toby Davis has now won his Touring Pro Series title. He's the virtual Clio Series champion, much to my chagrin. So, we'll go and bore with Toby Davis for a lap here, and hopefully he'll put a bit of a display for us. Almost a bit of a crowd favourite as well. Has become synonymous with that car. Has done almost every race of the World Touring Masters in the past four seasons. I think he's only missed two races in the past four seasons, and this car has been the one that has carried him to all those victories. So here it, we are. Start the lap. The lap starts right here, right at the line there. As you can see, the ticker start, but the start line is actually there for the start of the race, so that's the uh, bit of an idiosyncrasy of this, this track into the first corner. Hell Corner, and aptly named because many people's races end there on the first lap. And uh, all the preparation goes down the pan. It's a 90 degree corner. A bit of camber on the inside as well, but braking can be quite difficult into there as you go over the rise and crest now, up to up Mountain Straight, up towards Griffin's Bend. And around here we come, hugging the inside, of course. Just run a little bit wide and use as much of the road as you can. Trying to keep it smooth up the hill, now up towards the cutting. Dip it in here, down one gear, then down another gear into the cutting up here. So people have different lines through there. And uh, Davis gets out of shape, coming out of the corner, but not too bad. And then that corner there is deceivingly difficult. You can't go as light also as well as you put on the power as we go through the tree. And now through Sulman Park, as you feel the car bottom out right there. And then back up once again, over the top, over the vista. And now through McPhillamy. Ballsy corner, really out wide as far as you can. Two different lines you can have here. Go very narrow and uh, keep it nice and straight. Or you can sweep out wide and take the classic line. Davis prefers the out wide line through the dipper also. Right down the hill. Look how fast this track descends as we come now down towards Forest Elbow. Keep it nice and clean and tight. And make sure you get it into that camber right there. Just about did it, did Toby. 
and now the driver has a brake absolutely flat out down the back straight and we'll see what we can do as we come down the back straight into the chase and here we are now approaching 260 kilometers an hour in this car screaming in fifth gear as he's sweeping to here almost flat out probably actually is flat out in qualifying trim and get the car stopped as soon as you can for this corner here. Break as late as you dare. And in this corner, he's just annoying, really. You have to keep it right to the inside. And you, all you want to do is exit the corner. After doing a difficult corner at Chase, you want to exit it and get out of the way. But, of course, then you have the next corner coming up. And then the final corner. The break can always be quite difficult there. It's hit the curb quite hard. But, of course, when you're on a hot lap, it does not matter about the exit from that particular corner. And a 15-2 from Toby Davis. Not a stellar lap from him, but a great lap from Eunice Rivio. I was wrong when I said that maybe only three drivers are in with the shout of pole position here. Eunice Rivio is showing that he is definitely in with a shout of pole here in that 6-3-5. But his first podium, as I'm saying, at Oran Park, after coming close a couple of times. So, uh, ooh, very out wide there through Griffin's Bend also. So, so something like there from Toby Davis. We were mentioning it wasn't uh, anything particularly special. 16-0 from David Junt. So plenty of drivers here showing their true pace that we've not seen before. And uh, Jesper Tolborg is only done 16.5 so far. He's gone back to the pits, so he's on another outlap. The problem with doing several runs here, of course, is that you go back to the pits, and it takes you another two and a half minutes for you to start your next lap. So that can be a problem when you're planning out those particular runs. Robert Wiesenmuller is third at the moment. He's just gone third with that lap, with that wonderful sounding V8 growl of the Rover 3500 SD1 Vitesse. And Disney Nielsen's just seventh at the moment. He's got a second quicker than we saw him go in practice. So definitely he was got some more speed in him. You see the cars go light as they come over mountain straight. It's going to be a bit of a problem, actually. If you're not paying full attention through there, you really can lose it. So Robert Wiesenmuller, what has he got? He comes now up towards the cutting. The sector one time split is just after the tree. So we'll find out in just a few seconds. Matteo Bang goes eighth at the moment. Saw him have a few problems in that uh, Volvo at this particular track. Brindis House Ferrero goes twelfth. A banker lap for him. Not particularly good, though. He's back in 12th. Back right at the end of the people have made... And here is the... There is the split. 0.7. Robert Wiesenmuller is down at the moment. That's not particularly good first sector. As he flies through here, hitting the curb very, very hard. It's not really the way to go. You see the car wiggle and wiggle around. He has to get the car settled straight away. For Mephilomy, of course. And uh, the car is moving all over the shop at the moment for Robert, Robert Wiesenmuller. It's very, very lively, but is it quick as he flows it down the mountain, try and get it stopped for the dipper and flow through here also. Flattened the curb there with a new an update to this particular track. Uh, update by Neil Feitnick, and we thank him for all of his work. And Robert Wiesen will just squeeze it. Look, we're coming out the cutting 1.2 seconds down now. So unless he's got... He has got more speed on the straight, of course, because Eunice Rivio's car is not as quick in a straight line as Robert Wiesenmuller's. Very... Uh, Aerodynamic is that particular car. Look at its shape. Very aerodynamic indeed. And it flows through the air very nicely. What has Wiesen Muller got? As he flies into the chase. Look at the car moving around under braking. Looks like one of the Danes in the ATCC for those who watched that. And Robert Wiesen Muller squeezes the throttle out, out of the chase. The car goes light over that particular section also. You have to be on your toes almost all of the time this particular track. Ross McGregor goes into fifth place, by the way. Robert Wiesen, no what he can be produced, he cannot improve. 15.825 for him. Three tenths slower than his lap before. Because it's such a long lap as well, the tyres do go off. And you do only generally get one really good lap out of them. Because by halfway through your second run on a hot lap run, your tyres are really wasting away. Toby Davis comes towards the end of sector one. What has he got? He's just quarter of a second down, so we'll stick with this. Eric Tavite has gone second as well. 14-3-3-2. Look at that. Just two hundredths of a second separate. First and second right now. Toby Davis, what has he got? His next sector split is just outside Forest's, uh, Forest Elbow. Uh, Torborg is three tenths down. So he's three tenths down. And Davis is a quarter of a second down. Let's just follow along with Davis if we can. Between these two walls... Get as close as you dare to them, really. Oh, trying to hit the one on the inside, though, Toby. And into that corner there. Just try and get, keep as much speed as possible through there, of course, but not run out of the camber. He hit the wall on the outside, but he is faster. But will that little tap of the wall on the outside slow him down? This car does have quite high drag compared to the 635 and the Rover. And they're quite equal, the 635 and the um, 
the Sierra because the Sierra just has a higher brake horsepower. And Davis now into the chase. He has a chance of beating Rivio's pole time here, but he needs a perfect chase. He really does. And that looks very, very clean indeed. Very clean. And he bounces his way over the curb through there. Kicks up, kicks up a bit of dust. Comes towards now the final corner. Has to stomp on the brakes. Get it slowed down as much as possible. Don't hit the curb very much on the inside. Flow it out of here. Just stamp on the throttle towards the line. Stays third. He does improve, but he stays third. Robert Wiesenmuller is in fourth right now. I was going to say, that's uh, definitely not where Robert Wiesenmuller's time moment. And Jesper Torborg has gone fourth. So 14.639 from Torborg. So he's three tenths off Rivio at the moment. What's Rivio got in this particular, particular lap? He's coming towards the end of the lap. Has he got anything? Don't think he has. He looks a few, uh, maybe a couple of seconds off, actually. In fact, well, I could be completely wrong. I do apologise, we did the whole, broadca whole broadcast there with no engine sounds. I do apologise, and 14.604 there from Rivio, not able to make it happen. do apologise for not having any engine sounds at all. But uh, we are back with engine sounds now. Thank you to Ray Lilly for notifying me about that. I'm afraid I'm on my own today. Uh, nobody has turned up to do any commentary whatsoever, so I've had to uh, quickly fill in. And I do apologise for any gremlins that may uh, occur here today. Yes, Eric Devite about to start his flying lap. Toby Davis is on an out lap. Yes, but Torborg, what has he got? He's six tenths down, and he quits back to the pits. Chris Butcher is fifth at the moment, so he's found some pace. Robert Wiesemler is in sixth. David Junt there in seventh place. So, Eric Tavares, what has he got? Let's go on board with him. Oh, we get a nice, nice angle would be helpful. Let's go on board from the bonnet view of Eric Tavares. Into Griffin's Bend, keep it nice and clean. Keep the, the uh, you keep the speed up there, of course. You don't need to squeeze the throttle quite as hard, and uh, it helps, of course, the back end stay in place. Eric Devite not taking a, a slight strange line and entry there to the cutting. I notice, not getting right to the uh, to the wall on the inside, just flowing around the outside of it. So obviously he found a line that he's more comfortable with to fight, fight, fight his way through here. What is his lap? Oh, he's not actually told us what the split is, which is a shame. So we'll have to wait until the next split at Forest Elbow. Going towards McPhillamy now. It was very, very tight on the inside there. That's full commitment there from Eric Tavite as he goes now into the chase. Down, and uh, into the chase, into the, into the dipper in the S's. And he's just about got this car on the ragged edge right now. You really can feel he's comfortable in the car though. Oof, out of shape through that exit of the dipper though. Down towards Forest Elbow. And into that camber there. Try not to get the front wheel lifted up too much. And he's up. He's up by an entire six tenth. This could be a superb lap from Eric Tavides. He's got the edge of the straight line over 635 also. So if he's not more than six tenths up, he'll be probably slightly disappointed with this lap. So Eric Tavides now heading towards the chase. He's going to fly past our camera. There he goes. And the chase just rises up ever so slightly as you come up to it also as well. That's a nice uh, entry point to the second part of the chase also. For a good line down the straight, down towards the final corner. You can stamp on the brakes. Don't, you, don't worry about the exit from this corner really. It's not all about, it's about the entry. And just making sure you stamp on the floor. It's going to be a superb lap from Eric Tavite. And what is the lap time? It'd be helpful if the scoring told us. 13.570. We were absolutely right. It was a fantastic Lap there from Eric Tavides. Wonderful stuff from the young Norwegian. And that surely is pole sewn up by him. Davis is in third. What has he got? That's unfortunately the, uh, the timing. He's not giving us uh, proper timing here today. That's uh, quite frustrating. Yes, but Tolbog is, uh, just needs to find um, just over three tenths of a second to get in that front row. He's only fourth at the moment. He's had pole position at every single event so far this year. But he's got his work cut out this... this, this uh, time around to get this pole position. His 100% record is under threat. Reasonable that Chris Butcher is, is on track. Junt on track. Ross McGregor is on a hot lap also. Put 1.6 seconds down, but that would give him a 51 if he matches to Vite's final sector, which would be quite difficult considering how good it was. And he may jump ahead of Chris Butcher. But looking doubtful right now. Just lost one of the drivers actually. Didn't quite catch who that was. He was in ten, ninth place at the time. But uh, we'll stick with Torbog, see what he's got. 
Oh, again, it's giving us uh, bogus split times. One minute to go in qualifying, so that's it for Toby Davis. He'll not send another lap time. Eric Tavide is out on track, so he will try to send another lap time. Further increase that time. Eunice Rivio. I'll be very surprised if he can improve by eight tenths of a second. Ross McGregor goes up into seventh, so he's improved that one position over, <coughs> excuse me, David Junt, improved by half a second on his lap. So Eunice, I'd be very, very surprised if this is a 13-4, which is what he needs. Oh, he's just starting another lap, so he's just getting himself geared up for another lap, so that's definitely not going to be a lap this time around. So Rivio, onto his final lap. What has he got? Apologies for that. Somebody just joined him back into the server. That's Bruno Sousa Ferrero that we lost earlier. Or maybe Matteo Ban, in fact. I'm not quite sure exactly which driver that was. But either way, they're back in the server. Rivio, very out of shape through that first turn. JG goes into 14th. So he's been involved in a great battle with those guys. Quite close times, actually. Uh, Caroline's only 15th at the moment. Look at that. Caroline only 15th. He's coming to the walls, the final corner now, though. He's going to improve by at least uh, three or four positions here. But um, very ponderous into that final corner. And he's not going to improve. So Gary Lennon stays in 15th. He will get one more lap in, of course. So let's see whether he can make anything happen from there. Eric Devite starting his lap also. So let's uh, stick with Eunice Rivio. The sector split will probably not give us a indicative point. Always oh, hit the wall very, very hard indeed. And that is the end of Rivo's attempt at pole position. Yes, but Tolborg, I think he has just about managed to cross the line before the timer has, the checker flag has raised. So, yes, but has got a lap in, in him also, as has Eric Tveit. Yes, Eric Tveit has, because he crossed the line in time. I think he did, actually. In fact, actually, going to be quite close. But if uh, Eric Tveit has, yes, but Tolborg definitely has, because yes, but Tolborg is much further around the circuit, as you can see, about 15, 20 seconds around the circuit further. That's the that. Yes, but Tolborg split here. Probably won't give us an indicative. No, it will not. Apologise for that. So, yes, but Tolborg through Summon Park. Over the Vista. And now through McPhillamy also. And Jonathan Ockland saw him doing, do so well in qualifying. In that pre-practice, he was in 8th position, in fact. 16-8 he had, which would have been put him 13th. He's back in 17th. So, a bit disappointed by that. Yes, but flows through the S's and the Dipper. Not a particularly tight line through there, it didn't seem like to me. And Jesper, he's just trying as hard as he can. Oh, Jesper out of shape ball, so it's not going to help. Oh, and that's the end of that. And he was 1.4 seconds down anyway on Mr. Tveit's time. So that's the end of Jesper Tolborg. 100% record in this season, but it's been a fantastic season for him. He's had, of course, four wins from six. Still got a race to go here, of course. And six pole positions from seven. So Eric Tveit now, can he improve on that stellar, stellar lap time that he set earlier? We've not seen a purple sector from him, so it's looking like it's going to be quite close. As Gary Lennon starts uh, he's finishing his lap just ahead of him. Lee Palmer's popped into 13th, by the way, just while we're looking at Jesper Torborg. Will Lennon improve also? So we'll look out for Lennon's time to improve in the, in the standings if, if, if he does. And Eric Tveit now down towards the final corner, and very much doubt it's going to be improvement. And it is an improvement. What a lap time there from Eric to Veit. I can do a 30.5. We can do a 13.4. This is no flute, boys. I have pole position. Wonderful stuff there from Eric to Veit. 13.485. Absolutely has smoked the field here in his Rover 3500. And he could say, oh, it's the car. But look where Robert Wiesenmuller is. He's not a bad peddler himself. Of course, not the experience Eric to Veit has in these cars but 1.5 seconds behind the young Norwegian. So that shows the special talent that Eric Tveit has in that Rover Vitesse. So congratulations to Eric Tveit. That's a superb lap time from him. As a Jesper Tolborg gets back into the pits. And he's delaying our session, actually. So if you'd like to just go back to the, the garage, that'd be great. So Lennon goes into 15th, by the way, just while we're watching Eric Tveit also. So that is the lineup for you. And uh, while we're having this small break, I'd like to uh, just thank our sponsors for this, se this season, Sim Racing Hardware. They've been superb for us this season, and uh, Brian Clancy has offered up the prizes, who's, which have gone to Jesper Torborg, of course, for this particular uh, season. So, simracinghardware.com.
Com, which is all kinds of add-ons for your Logitechs, Logitech Tech, G25, G27s, and also your Fanatechs also. And uh, be sure to check out all those. They've also got some reviews on the Inside Sim Racing um, podcast uh, shows on YouTube also. So make sure to check out simracinghardware.com. Some of the best accessories, custom-made accessories, available in the world. No doubt about that. So here is the grid lineup for you guys. Tavite and Rivo in that front row. One no vision and one Finn. Toby Davis and Jesper Torborg on that second row. Of course, they're both part of THR, both great friends now. They used to be um, big, big rivals on track, but uh, much closer than they used to be. Fifth place is Wiesen Müller and Chris Butcher. So that's actually three, four, five, and six for THR. Of course, there are no teams in the world to win masses, but that's the organization they belong to and they race uh, as that combination. In, uh, in other, other leagues, the World Supertech Series, for example, Toby Davis and Robert Wiesen Müller are together and Chris Butcher and Jesper Torborg. So that, uh, that is an interesting lineup, those four together on track. Ross McGregor in seventh. He'll be looking to consolidate his uh, third place in the championship. And I hope he'll be, well, he won't be hoping that Eric Tavite slips up, of course, but uh, if Eric Tavite does slip up, we're hoping he can take advantage of that and maybe nick second in the championship. Eighth place is David Jones. He's just at the bottom end, as we were talking about earlier. He's just at the bottom end of that mid-pack um, points um, point standing. So he'll be hoping to get a few points here and just bump him up a, uh, for, you know, four or five positions here. Ninth place is Matty Orban, who's at the head of that, uh, that particular gaggle of drivers in the championship. So he'll be hoping just to stay ahead of those guys, keep his head above these guys. Tenth place, Bruno Sousa Ferreira. Uh, Eleventh place, Anders Nielsen. So he improved from his qualifying. Twelfth place, Jeff Dobbing. Thirteenth place, Lee Palmer. Good qualifying for him. He'll be quite pleased with that. Fourteenth, Enderman. Fifteenth place, Gary Lennon. Sixteenth place, Jay Aji. Seventeenth place, Jonathan Oakland. So... Okay, we're a bit disappointed with that in the end, actually. He could have done, probably felt he could have done a bit better. 18th place, Tristan Clark. 19th place, Tony Matthews. 20th place, ooh, I can't quite remember who 20th place was. They've left the server for now. 21st was Adam Bernard and 22nd, Matt Emmons. Unfortunately, did not qualify, has not been able to do so this season so far. So, we're sorry to see Matt Emmons did not make it into the race. So, hopefully, whoever just left the server will make it back. Oh, it's Andy Oakley. Andy Oakley is back in. So, he qualified in that 20th place and he's back into the, the server now. Eric Tavait is our pole position man and I would say definitely very much favourite for this race. Toby, Toby Davis gets his customary goods. Obviously, Bruno Sals a bit of two-wheel action there for the Portuguese. If we see uh, Toby Davis get, get his customary good start, we might see him challenge Eric Tavait in the opening laps and maybe hold him off. So we could see a corker of a race here, really. We've got the top seven drivers all with a chance of winning, I would say. Tavite, Rivio, Davis, Torbo, Wiesen Müller, Butcher and McGregor. McGregor, of course, never won a World Touring, Ma uh, World Touring Master race. In fact, he's never won a TPS race. So that could be his time to shine. Wiesen Müller has won a TPS race before. That was in the virtual mini challenge, of course. Well, Chris Butcher has won races in the TPS in, in uh, all kinds of series, actually, in fact. But only actually one win in World Touring Master, despite his uh, vast participation in this particular event. Yes, but of course, is the wing winningest driver ever in Touring Pro Series history. And uh, if you want to know the stats about that, you can go to touringproseries.com, click Hall of Fame in the top bar, and you'll be able to see uh, all the stats and the rundown of the top 15 drivers in each category, pole positions, fast laps, and podiums uh, in the Touring Pro Series. And in fact, it's a uh, do an update in the next couple of days, so make sure you look out for that also. And of course, you can like us on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. You can subscribe to us there. You get all of the action as soon as, that, as it comes out. And of course, you can re-watch all your favourite races. Um, we've got some clear highlights due soon also from the final event at Old Rink, which has happened a few weeks back, so make sure you look out for those. Uh, Yara Venari has actually been in hospital for an operation uh, lately, so uh, we wish him the very, very best of health, and we, I hope... Uh, as we, uh, I hope you are recovering okay, Yari. Hopefully you are watching this or uh, at least back on YouTube at some point. We wish you the best, Yari. Of course, Yari has done so much for the TPS in creating videos uh, which have helped uh, raise a profile, of course. And please bring joy and pleasure to so many drivers and viewers alike. Yes, but Torborg just uh, doing some practice here, trying to get himself back in the groove. There's a little bit off-colour 
I would say. I'm a bit surprised he didn't get second place in the standard, but of course this Supra is not 100% suited to this track. He could... Maybe it's a bit harsh me saying that about, uh, about Jesper Torborg, because Jesper, uh, of course, is in uh, fourth place in the group, but Lenny's back in 15th in the same car, so you could say Jesper's uh, definitely outperforming the car here. So we're about to go into the race here, as uh, Jonathan Oakley just practising his pit stop there. We will probably see pit stops for most people in this particular event. And uh, I will be joined by Scott Woodbiss in just a few seconds' time. He's going to uh, go through the race with me also here. So I'll, be, I'll have someone to talk to. Yay! Someone to talk to in this particular event. We're about to go into the action here also. Attention, Lord, so here we are now. The lap now. three at the top of the uh, lap one now. There we go. So it's actually uh, uh, fixed itself there. So we're into the race now. Driver's about to join the grid. Driver's about to join the grid and... Um, a formation lap will happen. As I say a hello to Scott Woodbiss. Welcome, Scott. Good evening, Ryan. Good evening, people. How are we doing? We're not doing, not doing too badly. We saw a dominant performance in qualifying from Mr. Eric Tavite. Eight tenths faster than his nearest uh, challenger. Did two laps of eight tenths faster than his nearest challenger, in fact. So, shows how dominant that particular uh, lap was. We're about to go on the formation lap here. Just saying, we've got uh, probably seven drivers here who can win this race. Wouldn't you say, Scott? Yeah, I mean, from what I've seen the World Touring Masters, it's a very open series. There are quite a few decent drivers in there. Um, you have to fill me in. Oh, well, as I say, that Jesper Tolberg is driving. We've got like, so Talborg, Davis, uh, Eunice Rabio. I have actually seen him a couple of times, and he's done a very excellent job. Uh, Eric Tavite, of course, won a race most to end the dominance of Jesper Tolborg in this series. Of course, it wasn't enough to stop Jesper from taking the WCM title. So, effectively, this is kind of a free-for-all race. But, yeah, you are right. We've got the likes, of course, Tvite, Davis, Tolborg, Wiesen Muller, Chris Butcher, of course, in there as well. David Jun has been impressive in these cars, too. So, I think Bathurst is a very kind of performance level. It's, it's, a, it's a circuit where some of those you maybe haven't seen so strong over the course of the season, they might come good on a big occasion such as this race. And, of course, being a legendary circuit that it is, this is the one that everyone wants to win. So, if you basically... If you can win this race here at Bathurst, you are submitting yourself as a WTM legend because it takes a lot of special skill to, to not only race, but to take victory on a circuit like this. It's a very unique circuit. It's obviously set up in the mountains. You've got, you've got the cars coming through this section here with Reed Park, Sullivan Park, you go through McPhillamy, and then you get right to the top of the circuit going up the Brock Skyline. Then that's when the descent drops through the S's, then through the gut-wrenching dipper. Then you go, to, you go further downhill, tuck left through Forest Elbow, all the way down the Conrad Strait. That's where we're going to see the cars with the higher horsepower, really seeing their advantage there. So it gets to stretch their legs down the huge Conrad straight, flat out through the chase, and it's down through Caltech's chase and up towards Murray's corner. So this circuit, it's kind of a lot of elevation changes, a lot of different mix of slow corners and very high speed stretches. So we're going to see a, bit, see a variety of different passing and uh, wide variety of talent here on display this evening. So hopefully to round out the season in my last ever mod, a great race with this mod, it should be a good one. Yeah, but no doubt. And of course, only uh, Tavite and Torborg have taken wins this season so far. Tavite has taken two, Torborg has taken four. What do you think the odds are of, of one of the other drivers? Are these good odds, or you reckon that because uh, Tavite's uh, dominant performance was, was so good that uh, this, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a, a Tavite or, or Torborg win for sure? Well, as I said, I think that Bathurst is, a, is, a, is, I would thought, for the most part, a bit of a performance level. You see that Eunice Rave has got himself second on the grid, and Davis has out-qualified the champion. So, I mean, those two guys, of course, Davis has experience of winning a champion. He is our, rate, he's our um, clear, virtual Clio Series champion. So, of course, he'll definitely want to try and round out, I would have thought, the, one of our last, if not the last, Touring Pro Series race of the year. I'm not sure we've still got a few more coming up this season. We this, just got this one on Friday, uh, the Pro uh -huh. Series, series. So... Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, everybody wants to win. This, this is the last race with this mod, and it's been a le it's a legendary mod, and there has been much uh, joy and, and, and much love is uh, is felt for this mod over the past four seasons. Of course, been using it for uh, for uh, over two and a half years now. So uh, and we've had lots and lots of races with these cars. In fact, if I just quickly do the the uh, number of races in my head: seven, nineteen, uh, uh, twenty-seven, and we had uh, I think we had eight last year. So I think thirty-five races with these cars, which is an awful lot of races, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a bit of prestige to see who can win the final race with these cars. Absolutely, and just um, I apologise in advance of Toby Davis, hopefully we get no incidents with Fanta Caps this time, because of course every, <laughs> a lot of people knew, Indeed. knew exactly what happened uh, last year, which cost them the WTM title. Of course, titles already been decided, 
And uh, last week was Cummings post. Oh, we've got BMW oh. sneaking in there. Now, who's oh, that? Jeff Dobbins decided not to uh, stay in formation, it seems. Oh. <laughs> he's had to <laughs> creep his way in. We'll have to he's wait for him to park now. it as well. Oh, he's got into position. Oh, that's very, very good of him. Yep. Well, here so here we are. Then. There the lights are on. Four lights are going to go on now. And four lights are out. Green, we are going. The final race of the World Touring Masters. And uh, it's Toby with a good start. Toby is trying to squeeze down the inside. Eunice Rivio on the outside. And it looks like Toby is going to get squeezed out by several drivers, in fact. Eunice Rivio takes the lead. So Rivio swoops around the outside. Thank you very much, boys. I'll take that lead. Uh, Rivio took the normal line through. Toby took a very narrow line. And look where Davis is going. He's gone for challenging for the lead. He's gone back to six. And Ross McGregor is now challenging him also. And we've got four from McGregor looking at Toby Davis. Looking down the inside. He's going to make a move. He is going to make a move. He's going down the inside. Thank you very much, Toby. If you think he's going to make a move, I am. And through I go. And oh, Davis so has gone sideways as well. Ball. He's way back in the pack. So Davis is a disastrous start for him. He's back in 13th. That has not helped his cause at all. Let's quickly watch down on the replay. As we come now down towards uh, Griffin's Ben Scott, McGregor down the inside. It was. It was a pretty daring pass from McGregor. You see the forces were on the inside. He just oh, lost look. traction. He was too just even by himself. to get back at the BMW. And as a result of that, he's lost an awful lot of places. Down, down, so he's up back to 12 places past Kevin Edmund in the BF Goodrich Nissan in front of him. And then we've got a lot of scrapping going on ahead of him. That's Mate Auburn, Jeff Dobbing, and Lee Palmer scrapping for 9th, 10th, 11th. Back at the front, though, up at Broxham for the first time. It's Rivio leading from Tobai. Butcher's up to third place, and Rivio, he almost outbreaks himself as they squirm their way down through the S's through the gut rich and dipper. That's a huge drop through that section there. Sparks flying as the putt cars bottom out on the end of the bottom of the corner and down towards. Forest Elba, they're going to tuck left and make their first high speed oh. set. And Nick is he's ragged, isn't he? He's ragged. He's really giving him a hurry. Tavite has his number right here. I can tell you that. Look out for Tavite to cut past on one of the sides of the car down this straight because Tavite definitely has the straight line speed, of course. There we go. That's a great shot, actually. It shows exactly how much faster that Tavite, that Tavite car is in the straight line because of the lower drag. And now Tavite has the inside into the chase. Side. Oh, and oh, almost. just squeezes through and Tavite is taking the lead of this race. A wonderful move from him. Just bided his time, knew that would happen and has gone through. And uh, Butch is also, also now under pressure from Jesper Tolborg as he comes out of the chase. And he looks like he's got great traction from there. Looks like Tolborg got much better traction and now he's being challenged. Cause so, so Tolborg had the draft down the straight also. And very well matched the Super on the, uh, the Sierra in a straight line because of the, of course the Sierra has a better off the corner exit. But of course the higher drag really puts him at a disadvantage there. Wiesen Miller looking for a little piece of action there on oh, his THR team. It says THR 123 here, of course. No team uh, championship in the, in the world to mass, but they are all part of the same organization. And look at Ross McGregor. He's just hanging on the back of these guys saying, uh, that's all right, you guys just battle away. And uh, I'll take any pieces that drop from the table. So Wright still leads, though, by 0.4 of a second. He does indeed. And going back to this situation with Toby Davis, you see here now we've got Butcher getting very defensive. Huge lockup from someone in front. That could have been possibly Ravio as we head through Griffin's Bend once again up towards the cutting. And it uh, looks like Butcher got a little bit out of shape. There goes Torvald trying to go up the outside. Meanwhile, just behind Weissmuller is just like fending off there the white, red, black and blue BMW behind. It's Talbot again thinks to go around the outside. Now they're going to go up towards Reed Park and Solomon Park right up to the top of the circuit once again. This quarter and then head across then. It's Butcher, Torvald, Griezmann are getting a little bit out of shape on the exit of that left right-hander. Right Looking back now from the rear wing, the whale tail rear wing on the full Sierra there. Oh, look at Torvald. He's champion. hungry, isn't he? Because he knows he's losing so much time to the guys in front. He does. And also what's important, look at this. Oh, these are going to take a panting. Oh, oh, well, that would have been daring down the inside into the, uh, into oh. Skyline and the, and the S's. That would have been... Oh, and uh, Torvald. Oh, I thought he had him out of shape for that. The car was just dragged wide, but no, it's all right. He managed to get the car back once again as they come over that curve. Very flat now. And look who's catching up, catching the ball. So look who's behind Ross McGregor. David Jones. Hello, boys. <laughs> it's 1.2 seconds at the uh, at the top of the hill. At the bottom of the hill, it's going to be more like 0.2 of a second. And uh, the gap indeed is 0.3 of a second. So uh, there you go. So and a bit of action ahead. And in the back, in the back of shot of just behind Toby, behind David Jones. Look who's now charged the eighth place, Toby Davis. There's now 18 laps to go. There he is. He's now just got past Bruno Salazar Ferreira in the blue BMW behind. So he's really starting to charge back up through the field after his first lap misdemeanor. And he's now heading down towards the... Oh, that actually Ferreira tries up the inside at Caltex Chase. Oh, look Ferreira's car move. drift as a result of that as and well. Uh, just also, yeah, just ahead as well, we've seen that David Jump was having a look. There's a pass going on behind. Now, who was that? That was my mate Auburn. And that was Gary Lennon and Jay Edgy going side by side. That's now Ooh, Sierra still by on side, Supra. Side by side. And there goes Lennon. Yep. Lennon in the white FINA sponsored Supra going past 
But of course, look who's behind them, Jonathan Ockley, and he's got the power in that Mustang. He's going to now come down to down this straight, and uh, Chris Butcher and Jesper Torborg still very, very close indeed. They just swap <laughs> positions quickly there. We still watch uh, this interesting here, because Ockley just has to stay here. Nice, easy, simple corner. Put the power on, and away you go. Because he's got the power of these guys in front. Definitely got more power than these guys in front. The snarling V8 Look at it go, here we go, it's going to pull on the straight now. Yeah. Look at it, it's gaining on these guys, hello boys. It's going to just blast past right now, oh, oh no, 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 look at that. Oh, and Lennon, Lennon decided he wanted that oh. part of the track and contact. And Orkoklint into the wall, a little bit naughty there from Mr. Lennon. That is, he, knew, he knew that Orkoklint was coming and tried to tuck him behind J.I.G. And uh, of course, Orkoklint was already there, so uh, Mr. Lennon, a bit naughty from him, so he uh, may see a bit of a... A bit of a scene too from the shoes. Uh, but uh, back at this battle here, by the way, uh, Butcher and McGregor now are the guys at the head of the field. I saw Wiesenmuller got past uh, Torborg, but now McGregor's got past Wiesenmuller and Torborg, so I'm not sure Where's what's happened to those from? guys. So let's see if we get that on the replay. I'm not sure we can. Oh, oh we actually might be uh, in luck here, actually. Let's just rewind it back. I know it's very impressive yeah. looking, guys, but uh, we do want to see the action. So here we are. So I see. So Wiesenmuller got past uh, Torborg at the first corner, it looks like to me. And then of course, McGregor had gone past Wiesenmuller down the straight into the next corner. So at McGregor, thank you very much, guys. Very battle in front. I'll drive past you all. So again, McGregor's um, stoic, you know, driving has really paid off. And also, you saw they're just uh, trying to get back past around the outside. Tolbert was uh, not having any of that. He was basically saying, um, "That third place is mine. So I'll have that back." Thank you. And look at Toby Davis. You can 3.5 tell five he seconds was the gap last lap. One point seven now because they're battling. And he's going to be right back in this battle for third place. You can tell he wants redemption from the last year. They, I, I think, this, as you said, there's no, there shouldn't be any Fanta caps interfering with his, uh, his driving this time around. So he's now really closing on these five. And I've said it time and time again whenever I've commented, the harder the guys in front fight each other, the easier it is for the, not only the cars in front to pull away, but for the cars behind to gain an advantage. Oh, here we go again. And here they're going to edit again. You see Talbot down the inside of Wiesenmuller into Murray's corner. That's a nice, easy pass in fifth place. Hands to tail up slightly of that super on the picture once again. Looking there back he is, going back Wiesenmuller. though. There he coming is. straight Quite back, the, he is. and coming straight this is back classic cutback territory, isn't it? The two 90 degree corners in a row, and same. Oh, he didn't go for it. He didn't go for it. Torborg decided to go very aggressive on the brakes, and he didn't go for it. And Yunz is right in behind. 1.5 seconds now the gap between Toby Davis and Yunz, so he'll be sniffing the draft pretty soon. Here and then McGregor, McGregor now on, on Butcher, and we've seen this before on a, a Ford Sierra THR driver. Of course, it's reverse position, and in the background, Visa Mo now the inside of it. Torborg, oh, he's out of shape, and he's blocked the road. He's blocked the road, and Torborg has lost position to Young. There comes Toby Davis sideways through the shot. Wonderful stuff. Visa Muller, daring move. Torborg and shoved him to the inside, and Davis on the outside of Torborg. I want the call. It's fine. He's taking it. Oh, that's almost amazing. Oh, it's oh, Torborg takes him back once again. Oh, straight down, Davis sideways, just got the car stopped. Oh, it's wonderful stuff here. We said it'd be a good race, and oh. we were not joking. That's and McGregor's got past Butcher. Butcher trying too hard, look, smashing the wall on the outside because he's flicked up on that curve. Davis was back at Griffin's Bend. That, that was so close. Oh, and Davis made a mistake somewhere, has he? Well, I'm not quite sure. I mean, he must have just made a, a, a small error, but he lost 0.4 of a second. Oh, in that small area, and very, very out of shape. Just need to calm himself down, keep it nice and... Uh, Nice and calm because that uh, car is a bit ragged right now. It's already got damage. Doesn't need any more. To right, to right is it? Oh, I was, oh, he's not lost the lead. Sorry, just the timing has not picked uh, him up for some reason during that particular sector. He is still leading. So sorry for getting excited there, but the timing showed us that he dropped a position to Rivio after leading by three seconds. So, uh, but he's not. He just he's still leading. Just the uh, the timing did not pick up for him. So we can all calm down now. This battle has and Fiesenbill is back to ninth now. Look. He's made another small mistake, I do believe, because I don't think he was behind Orban and Ferreira uh, after that mistake. And he's going oh. down the inside of Matthew Orban. That's two very different cars in a straight line, those guys. Because Orban, of course, is in what people call the fridge. In that <laughs> Oh, and he's on the inside of Ferreira. How did he do that? That came this from nowhere. This boy is just opportunistic. He, he, he defines the word opportunistic in this race. He tried to dare him to move up the inside. Didn't quite work. But, and now he's going around the outside of Ferreira. Oh. That was... This I'll say that eight place back through. Them. Thank you very much. <laughs> this, he, this, I, th I think, I think, Visa has found his groove. Somehow, he and the Rover are in just perfect, perfect harmony because 
He really seems to be enjoying hustling this car around Mount Panorama, and he's now actually leaving these guys with dust, quite literally, to go through a dust cloud there. Now his next target is going to be Toby Davis in front of him. There's quite a gap in front. There's a big gap, uh, quite a big gap. And you've got there to is. just see Beesman in the background, actually. This patrol has a gap on Davis as well, so it's all calmed down after that <laughs> set of action over a lap. We could see it brewing, couldn't you? You could see the action was going to happen, but it didn't seem to be quite so dramatic. But Chris Butcher's in fourth, and McGregor is disappearing, so McGregor's spoiling the party of this lot. McGregor should be at the front of him holding Chris Butcher up now so everyone else can catch up and make more action because McGregor's only interested in getting his race on with. So of course he wants to consolidate his third in the championship. And what we have to remember as well is that Eric Tavai is only 14 years old and this man is leading the race here at Mount Panorama in this wonderful Demon Tweaks Rover Vitesse or Rover SD1, whatever you want to call it. And he's doing a fantastic job It's got hundred different here. names, hasn't it? I, I, it was never actually called the SD1. Yet uh, everyone seems, to, uh, you know, the, the, in, in, you know, in slang, or whatever we want to call it, in terminology, layman's terms, it's always called the SD1 um, because that was its code name, and um, its actual name is the 3500 Vitesse. But SD1 sounds much better, so we'll stick with that, shall we? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's much more simpler as well. So yes. It's just, just, it's just three syllables: SD1. That's it. Yes. The 3500 is <laughs> super duper, super <laughs> duper Vitesse. Yeah, try saying that fast five times. That's not really going to work, is it? But, uh, I'm glad I've not been drinking if I'm going to start saying <laughs> that. That's good. Yeah, add, add an alcohol with that kind of but name is the whole disaster. Sorry to interrupt, but we've got this lennon Orkelind battle uh, still raging. I'm sure Lennon just, went, just uh, swapped positions with, with uh, Orkelind. Orkelind has maybe spun it again because... No, actually, no. Maybe, it's, maybe that's not the case. Maybe my eyes were deceiving me. But... Um, Tristan Clark and Lee Palmer quite close to track at the moment. Andy Oakley and Anders Nielsen is way back at the moment, 16th in their holding that suited this track also. He qualified in 9th, so a bit disappointed with that. Maybe 11th actually qualified, uh, tell a lie. Qualified in 11th place. But uh, everyone's calmed down a little bit. But these three are now providing the action for us. Torbo is 0.3 behind David oh, Jones. Down the inside. Oh, And uh, neither of those cars like to uh, go on the brake, so uh, it's always a bit of fun when those, two, when those two cars go side by side into a braking zone, especially when it's downhill, which is that <laughs> corner. But now Indeed. Torborg and Juntz and Butcher are the battle ahead of us. So this we are looking forward to. Torborg's got a big draft on David Juntz and the car has low drag. So it responds to the draft much better than many other cars do. And it's going to go down the inside. And David Juntz has not done a Torborg on Wiesenmuller. He's uh, let him go. David Juntz, pretty sensible driving there. He's going to follow Torborg up to Chris Butcher now, I believe. And they're going to challenge for that fourth place. But hopefully, Tob Butcher can just hold him off for a couple of laps and that'll let Toby Davis catch up. We may see pit stops pretty soon as well. There's four laps away from pit stops. Only four laps away from the halfway of the race. We're shooting through already. Six laps gone of the 20. Again, um, the timing has not picked up Eric to Vite through there. So he's a. Uh, he must be hacking. He's <laughs> <laughs> a, a bit of a ghost out on track at the moment. In fact, he is so much of a ghost, nobody can hold a candle to him. That's a good line, that what? one. I like that one. I keep that for. Uh, <laughs> Future use. <laughs> like the woman in black kind of line. Anyway, <laughs> it's for Toby Davis. Store that one. Store that one in the bank for later. Uh, definitely, that's much better than my uh, candy from uh, Toby's candy from a baby and my uh, <laughs> candy when you're older teeth falling out uh, malarkey from uh, ATCC. For those who wonder about uh, that, and you, you may see that in the Touring Pro Series moments, uh, uh, best moments uh, video, which is coming out at the end of this year. So look out for that. And uh, I believe we've had someone jump in. Our yeah, Robert Beesman. What's Weisman. happened to Robert? Probably didn't notice you disappeared. What happened? Yeah, I just disconnected. Um, somehow Eric Twight uh, disappeared from, from the track and um, he came back on and in this moment I lost my connection. Oh, so Eric Twight is hacking. <laughs> no, <we're joking. laughs> so uh, that's very unfortunate. We saw you do a, uh, some, some great moves though in the, in the small amount of time you were on track. Were you enjoying yourself out there? Yeah, it was great. It's a shame that this, uh, this race is not over for me because uh, I really enjoyed the mod even though I only drove three races on it. Great fun. I tried to pass yes, but unfortunately I spun a little bit. So, yeah. Spun a little bit? You were sideways blocking the track! And then you made a great move, of course, that, like, that down the inside of Bruno Salas Ferreira. Down the inside, on the entry to the um, second part of the chase, and then around the outside of the final corner. How was that for you? Yeah, this was... Uh, I just made a move on, uh, on Matteo Orban earlier, on the run down to, uh, to the chicane there. And uh, then... Uh, Bruno didn't get a good exit and I just tried to, tried to go by and it worked out, it was pretty cool. Yeah, unfortunately, my last, uh, my last overtaking move in this car. So, sorry to see you at the end of this, uh, after this race because we were entertaining during that time. And oh, it's out, out sideways again, we'll see you in a couple of days time. Uh, Robert's at the WSS race, 
and uh, at Brasilia, so a uh, good look for that. Thanks. Cheers, Robert. And now side by side, Butcher and Tolbog. Tolbog's going to take it this time, look. Oh, Tolbog's going to take it this time on the inside, up the hill. Butcher's still arguing the situation. He's right on the outside, still arguing. Don't be on the outside there. That's definitely not the place to be on the outside. And Tolbog forcefully takes the position. And now David Jump wants a piece of the action also. I was watching those two as we were talking to Robert there. It's, it, it all started really back on Conrad's straight. Tolbog tries to get as much sideways to the Philippines there as they go through. Onto skyline, but yeah, Talborg was side by side with oh, Chris. Oh, Chris! Oh, he's, he's, he's almost, almost binned it. That was close. That Sorry, was Chris Scott, carry on. That's I thought that was almost a repeat. What Toby did. In fact, Toby actually did almost did a repeat what he, he did last year, which lost them a championship a few laps ago. Obviously, whilst we were watching it, but uh, like I said, it all started back and right here on the straight lap ago. It's oh, but oh, sideways he is. Forest elbow, and so this trio of Sierras then heads onto the Conway straight once again. Uh, and, went, and yeah, it was Butcher and Tom on side by side, but it had to be half of that there, and obviously it all finished up, up at the cutting. But watching back now from the rear camera of Chris Woods, looking back at David Jones in the Texaco Sierra, just behind in the Andy Rouse in the green calibre Sierra is Toby Davis, as they head through cat the, oh, the chase. And uh, Davis think was getting a little bit ragged on the back of the Jones' uh, rear end there, as... Uh, Talbot now starting to streak away already. He's looking to go after third place Ross McGregor, and he's going to try and make up a four-second deficit with the pace that Talbot is going at the moment. I wouldn't have thought that's too much too difficult a task for him. As uh, the trio of Turbo Sierras keep going, and these two are still going at it. They're <laughs> they're still Last time we still saw these guys, they were side by side in that corner, and they're, they're still, still doing it. It's still so much, so nothing's changed then, but here goes the Volvo up the inside, a little bit of contact, a little bit of body panel. Oh, it's nice racing, it's a wonderful racing, great respect between both these drivers right here. It is, and they head up. And of course, they're very, quite well matched in the straight line, the, the, um, the Volvo is a little bit slower in the straight line because of its uh, higher drag than the Sierra, so that sees the Sierra pull in front. Of course, Sierra has a slightly higher um, top, uh, brake horsepower also, so... Uh, the, 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 the Volvo is very much, a, a, for those guys who have not driven these uh, cars, the Volvo is very much a point and squirt car. So you, uh, places like uh, maybe Laguna Seca, uh, well, maybe not too much because the handling needs to be there as well, but places like uh, Trois Rivières, for example, simple corners and short shoots. And uh, the, uh, the Volvo is very, very good at those particular corners because it just has uh, very, very, very peaky torque and very low revs. And it shoots out the corners with its low weight also as well. Of course, the longer straights and its high drag really slow it down quite a lot and that's the issue it has here of course these fast corners also don't suit it too much because the Sierra is not the best at cornering also so kind of uh, kind of horsey for course is that it, it is and also keep watching brief isn't he so uh, hopefully he'll he uh, oh, 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 an incident. oh here. we've had an incident that Oakley and Palmer Anderson. are around Oakley and pa Nielsen. here we are so here is here is Anders Nielsen let's just try to see if we can actually get to um there we are. There is Andy Oakley. Here we are. Sorry, because we're going to get different con controls. So here is Andy Oakley. Through. Oh, wait, oh no, it there it, it is. Palmer had lost it in front of them. Look. Oh, oh. and Andy Oakley is so unlucky. Clips him and fires into the wall very hard. Oh, that is a big impact. That is a big, big impact. Oh, and uh, oh. Tristan, Tristan Clark, Clark clips him also. How is Andy Oakley just pulls across the side of the road? What happened to Lee Palmer? That's what I would like to know. We'll have to rewind and have a look. We can. Oh, Lee ah, Palmer, of course, is now ahead of him. Right well, here we are. Look, oh, he just lost, lost it by himself. himself. Oh, no, no, look, no, no, no. graphics free for something? Because he just drove straight to the wall, look. Either that or he's had some problem with his steering. It looks like he got it back, but it may be the graphics free. Look, look, he's, look, he's just gone, he come up there and it's just gone, oh, I don't want to turn now. Look, he's not turning the wheels at all. And smash into the wall. And other Pow. side, of course. And just he's not going to the turn. Not just any escape, of course, either, because oh, and that is a big hit for Andy Oakley. That's get good. me, that is that a scary huge, reminds huge me. hit. That scary reminds me of one of the one of the a couple of accidents that have happened right at that section in real life. BHC, it was including the very unfortunate fatal accident that uh, was life with Mark Porter, so rest in peace for him. But it, it, it's very reminiscent. Oh, of the that, that, and I know this is virtual racing, but it just illustrates how dangerous that corner is in really in real life as well. Yeah. Because if anything happens, really got absolutely nowhere to go. It's a single line corner, and absolutely full chat. It's, it's so such a quick corner. Poor Andy Oakley. Corner. End of the it's race for him. He only did one race this season, and that's the end of his. Yeah, 
not the way he wants to end it. I'm pretty sure that's that, that's that, that's pretty obvious. And uh, these three are still going at it. Talbot's decided to head off into the distance. He's got a 3.4 second advantage over this troublesome trio. It's Butch oh, and Butch is wide again. It's Villamy. He's been struggling now, hasn't he? He's going to side by just side. He's going to This is not going to be good. This is not no, going to be good. Junt uh, pulls out of oh, it. Oh, Butch has almost lost oh, it. Davis is out of shape once again. Through Sky, going to watch himself there because no matter whether you're out of shape or not, it's still classified as cutting, of course, if you run too much onto that grass. So we just need to calm it down a little bit. And Yunt, he's definitely, I think, faster than <laughs> Chris Butcher, who's absolutely all over the place at the moment. Coming towards the end, I think, of these tyres, we may see pit stops pretty soon. Look out for those. We're on lap 9, about to start lap 10 is Eric Tveit. He's leading by 7.8 seconds from Yunus Ravio. Ravio in second place. If he holds that position with two second places in a row for him, McGregor is in third. And yes, the tall walk in four. It's closing. Nah, He's not as it. fast as we, we expected, though. 3.5 seconds. Oh, 2.5 seconds, in fact, actually. So, yes, he is closing as fast as we expected. <laughs> so, Butcher and, <laughs> and Young were. Oh, and it's all oh, no! Butcher's no, going to cross the track, and poor Toby Davis has been involved in Butcher's mistake. Let's watch that on the replay, shall we? Here we go. Into the chase. We, we had it. Clean pass from Jones. Looking That's from really Chris Butcher. Yeah, very young. Pass. Looks on the outside, right on the outside still. Side. Oh, and Butcher and course goes fast, is he? That's why. Outbreaks is over the kerb, and as a result, this leaves Toby Davis nowhere to go. And then Chris Butcher's over the gravel, as is Davis, he quickly rejoins. But that purely, Butcher did that all himself, and Toby Davis was just an innocent bystander on that one. So Butcher's down to seven. He's now got Pereira right behind him, and now they've got Ange still Jan and Gary Lennon still going out. But he's lost a, but mate, almost lost a place. He has indeed. In fact, Gary Lennon has spoiled this little party, hasn't he? Yeah, they've shown that they've only got two supers in the top tier. But Bruno think. wants a piece of uh, JRG. <laughs> he's uh, he's been he's been uh, constantly just uh, driving around by himself, and suddenly uh, at some point, one of the THR Sierras appears, or one of the THR drivers. Actually, earlier on, it was Beeson Mother who who appeared out of nowhere. Davis, of course, appeared out of nowhere as well. <laughs> and now Butcher's appeared out of nowhere. So uh, everyone, like uh, everyone's all, they're obviously pals with uh, Bruno. <laughs> it's like Pokemon, isn't it? A wild Chris Butcher appeared. The, the, wild, the wild Chris <laughs> Butcher, the wild Chris Butcher attack. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, will, we, will, we will never have a Pokemon reference ever again in no, any TPS no, broadcast. No, we no, apologise profusely for that. Scott is now sacked. Okay. Joke. Let it in tenth place. I think you sacked like the speculation elf. Yeah, there you go. Um, that's you go. Ah, in fact, actually, Robert Beesemill has uh, disconnected his karma for his speculation elf uh, <laughs> business in the last particular <laughs> event. For those guys who did not uh, don't know about this. Uh, go this on is YouTube. news to me. So <laughs> well, go, go on YouTube and uh, have a look at the, uh, the second race of the ATCC race at Hungara Ring. Just watch through that and um, you'll, you'll see exactly what we mean about uh, evil speculation. Oh, there's been a bit of uh, blockage of the brake in front. Bruno Salazar Ferreira must have been, or maybe Chris Butcher, of course. But um, yes, go, go to YouTube. It's uh, youtube.com slash Pro series and you'll find out exactly what uh, what we're talking about. Very entertaining it was also. Indeed. But uh, Ross McGregor is coming under attack now from Jesper Torbo. Jesper Torbo is not pitting this lap. But so I presume Jesper Torbo will is. pit at some point. But um, Ross McGregor is into the pits at the halfway stage. So it's a general normal uh, pit stop for him. And we have nice old-fashioned fast pit entries, pit speeds in, uh, in this uh, series. 130 kilometres an hour is the limit. And uh, you can go as fast as you like, of course, in, uh, in real life. But, of course, we don't want to keep, give, it, give it too much. It's 80 miles an hour. It's plenty. And we're going to get much well. faster pit stops, of course, than, uh, than in previous uh, <laughs> than in, the, in, in real life. 7.9 seconds there from Ross McGregor. He's out once again. A nice clear air, clear air, in fact, actually, behind Toby Davis and David Yunt. So he'll be looking to make hay while the sun shines in that particular bit of space. Let's go through. Well, has got past... Um, Oh, oh, what's happened no, to Jay Edge? Dropped back. Jay Edge has dropped back in behind Matty Orban. So this, uh, this story continues to, uh, to develop. The plot these thickens between these guys, doesn't it? Yeah, these, th these, three, these three have been constantly scrapping for the lower rungs of the top ten, the, for the points in the top ten for quite some time. In fact, the whole race, if you like. These three just uh, seem to really enjoy battling amongst each other, and they kind of really just made, made their own kind of race. And obviously, we've forgotten about the front runners because they know no disrespect to them also because they, they're not able to stay with the top guys. They thought, well, we'll just race amongst ourselves and have some fun on the last race here at Bathurst. So as they keep going. Um, Talborg's still third. Junt is about eight seconds behind. There's Anders Nilsson in the big Holden Commodore. 
I was, about, I was going to say about the Holden Commodore, that it's a, this is a very similar car to the Volvo. It's kind of, I think it, it handles slightly better, but what I know of the Holden, it's one of those cars that... It, it, it's, it, it's, 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 it's more similar to the, to the Mustang than, than, the, than yeah. the Volvo. The, the, I think this, the, from what I've learned, this, the, the Holdens are better for like on a longer, more long distance races. They're more durable, and uh, well, they're not exactly tanks. I, I reckon they're. I think you're right. <laughs> they look they, like tanks. The, <laughs> well, well, I mean, but bear in mind that this, this actual model of Commodore, the VLSS uh, Group ATWR, this car did actually win Bathurst in 1990 at the hands of Alan Grice and Wim Persson. I actually classed that as my favourite ever Bathurst. I used to watch that as a kid, time and time again. That was. And, um, uh, that, that was a, quite a fortuitous win, it, to be honest. Was, they it, weren't exactly the fastest car out there, but of course it, it was it a 1000 kilometer race and you have to be there at the end, and uh, that's yeah. exactly what uh, Wim Percy and uh, Alan, Alan Grice, Grice did. And, Grice, and that uh, does prove the point I said that these cars are better on the endurance races because they're reliable, they seem to be more, pretty reliable, and whilst all, the, whilst all others were losing their heads, including, I should might add, the, uh, the, the Orient Express that was the Nissan GT. So, oh! And I just, just, that just, that was his just, head <laughs> that, that was no, well, to be, to be fair to the, to, the, to the Skyline, that was its first season, only run half a season running before that particular it was, event. Yes. And it did last about 60 laps longer than everybody else, everybody thought it would as it well, did. It did, <laughs> to be honest. It, but it, it, but it, it, it did miss out on the top 10 in qualifying thanks to uh, uh, a couple of spins in qualifying. It only managed 11 on the grid, but it still didn't take it long. Not really mattered. It took it only a handful of laps to get into the lead, so but uh, So I think it fits also. Sorry, it does, yeah. It. But uh, no, I think... I, I, talking of GTR obviously with, with this mod, I think that the, the R32 GTR was a car that was scheduled to be added into this mod, but I think they took it out of the last minute possibly because I, I'm actually not quite sure why they took it out. The model wasn't good was enough. They, both the XJR and the, and the R32 models were just not produced at a high enough standard at the time for them to release this mod. And there, of course, several uh, several times they've uh, said they're going to add it and, nev and they never have, and uh, unfortunately we'll probably never see it. Um, it, is, it is, I think it is in the GTR2 mod actually, in fact. But um, it's, it, I'm not sure exactly how well received it's been. But um, yeah, four-wheel drive, 600 brake horsepower. Very heavy, of course, because it had four-wheel drive and 600 brake horsepower and uh, the, the um, limitations levied to it by the ATCC. Um, and eventually it's that car that, that, uh, that car and the Sierra that killed off this particular type of racing. It was. And because it was uh, the cost has got too high. And uh, that's just a general thing what happens. You know, er, the, er, the, you know we go through eras. Then, then we of course went to the Super Touring, which was the next big era of touring car racing, and of course that eventually yeah. got too high. So uh, the, it, we go through stages, yeah, and uh, was. this was a glory stage um, in touring cars, of course, and um, it was uh, not as exciting racing as everyone thought it was. In ATCC, definitely, but in, in other race, in other particular events, in the DTM it was fantastic racing also, but in BTCC and WTCC, it wasn't an ATCC. It wasn't quite as good racing as everyone thought it was because they were long endurance races. The cars were more the attraction rather than the racing. So roasting, roasting the glasses for anybody that tells you the racing was amazing back in the day. Yeah, and um, I think obviously after Group A kind of split up as you see Toby Davis heading in for his schedule pit stop from that was fifth place. Obviously that's totally Josh McGregor going to go back, go back through ahead of him. Um, after Group A kind of disbanded, everyone kind of went their own separate ways because BTCC went for the two litre formula, they went eventually to Super Tourism. Uh, you know, DTM went for their own format. Obviously, they brought in cars such as the Great Big Alpha 155 and you know the Mercedes 190E and the BMW M3 as well, and the Opel Calibra. Those, those kind of silhouette kind of cars. Of course, then Australia then went to the, back back to what we know as often the V8s, which then turned into the, the V8 supercars. So, kind of the Group A was kind of like the the the, you know, the, the de facto touring car formula until up, up to. As, uh, as late as 1992, because I do believe that the Australia was the last, uh, I suppose, a national touring car series to use the Group A format. And obviously, once that died out, it was uh, that was that. But uh, back to the racing scene, there's a bit more, a bit, bit of a, <laughs> a, a, a bit, bit, bit <laughs> letting an old banner found a new side. mate look. Yeah, he has in Chris in uh, in, in, Chris, in Chris Butcher. So actually, look at that mate Auburn now tagging off the back of this. So it's got uh, Sierra Supra and well, I'll try to go for the. The trio of S's there, we call Sweden, I suppose, if that's Volvo. But well, it's, a good, it's, Volvo. it's a good effort. It's a good I like it. It's, it's, it's a good it effort. It is a good effort. It is a good effort. Oh, and Butcher getting a little bit sideways off the top of uh, S Reed Park. Now, if you saw one part, they're very fast coming. Oh, look at Butcher, Butcher out, of oh. out of shape. Right oh, he's still out of shape. Look at that, he's still out of shape. He's going to go straight in the gravel here. Oh, oh, he's not. No, he's, he's just about to carve back. Unbelievable stuff. How on earth is he holding on to that? He needs to pick, quite frankly, get some fresh tyres on that because that's. A walking disaster, that car right now. A walking disaster, it's a racing disaster. It and he's actually lost position to Bruno Sarsfair. Remember, Bruno Sarsfair was about a second behind him, and he's lost positions back to those guys. So he does need to pit 
Yeah. And the get, he was second behind him, now he's 4.3 seconds ahead of Chris Butcher. Of course, Butcher's now, not only that, he's losing time, he's also kind of, not, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd say ruining's, ruining's the wrong word, he's kind of just holding up Lennon and all the Olympics. I'm not quite sure if these guys are going to are going to be pitting. I think it depends on how much these, the, the tyres wear on these different models. I think well, I mean, an, It looks like a no-pit race for to Vite, look. Yeah, the... Was although that, although he, he can afford to pit, couldn't he? <laughs> he got a 13 well, that's true. second gap. That, that's and he lose about 15 true. seconds in the pit. So, uh, that's, very, that's very true. I, mean, was, I, I did get a rumour through um, a message from... A, a, the, the person who sent it will remain anonymous. But um, they did tell me that Eric Zweig would possibly be going through the race race without a pit because they thought the car was strong enough to not, to not need to warrant a pit stop. So um, do you, that, you, know, you, could be, you could be very right. Zweig could, could feel that the... Uh, but the, the the Roma has such good tyres that management is so good on its tyres that he doesn't actually need to pit. And of course, <laughs> well, if he just let, drives like that, hanging the tail out almost pretty much every single corner, not going to last very much longer. But he's actually doing quite all right at the moment at this rate, as we're in lap 14. So we've got this lap another six to go. So if Dwight can eke it out, it'd be very impressive to do that. Of course, Rivio is doing also an impressive job as well. Because uh, Ross McGregor is, is the next highest BMW in fifth, and he actually has had to ready to pit. So looks like that Ryber seems to be a little more easy on his tyres compared to McGregor there. You see uh, that as evidently demonstrated by Mr McGregor as he locks up into the cutting. It's unusual that because McGregor is usually a bit better on tyres, one of the other guys who's better on tyres overall. So maybe he just miscalculated the strategy rather than be better, on, you know, worse on his tyres. So that's well, one of the reasons he did so well in the virtual V8 supercars is because he didn't have scintillating pace, but his tyre wear was so good that it brought him back into the picture. Uh, absolutely, and I think also, you know, good time management is one of those things where it just it, it helps you to become more consistent and to be able to, you know, just get those consistent results. I mean, it's just a prime example of consistency in terms of points coming finishes. But this season, for one, look at Kimi Raikkonen. Won one race, got some points, players, finished every single race, only finished out of the points once, but he still managed third in the championship on his first year coming back. And, uh, you know, so I think it just shows that consistency is the way to go. And if you can just go ahead and plug away and just get those points finishes, try and do your best to finish every single race and do the best job you can, then there's, there's no telling whereabouts you can end up at the end of the season of the championship. So you just have to really just have that consistency there in order to really do what's done standard charts. But uh, looking back here, looking back from Gary Lennon's super... Davis has gone down the inside of Orban, approaching Skyline, and I think Orban just let him go a little bit actually there, which is a sensible thing to do considering Davis has been into the pits. Let's just quickly run down the peak guys who have been in the pits for us, so that, just to uh, clarify the picture for you. To bite, has led this race pretty much from the start. He passed Rivio um, around a, uh, at the end of lap one, and Rivio has been second the rest of the race. He has not pitted. Neither Tobias or Rivio has pitted. Tolbock has been back in the pack and battling, and is now into third place. Has not pitted. Yunt has been battling very much with uh, Butcher and Davis and McGregor and all those drivers. Has not pitted. Ross McGregor has pitted. He's running in third for quite a while there. Bruno Salsa Ferreira has not pitted. He was running a. Uh, He's been running pretty well all, all race, actually. Running back, in the, uh, back end of the top ten, taking advantage of the people pitting or spinning or what have you. Gary Lennon has now got past Chris Butcher, and Hubby Davis is going to do the same thing. So they've both got past uh, Chris Butcher now. Gary Lennon, has, Gary Lennon has not pitted. He qualified in 15th, so he's had a great race coming through the pack. Toby Davis has pitted. So he's a uh, main mistake on lap one. He's dropped back and is now fighting his way back through once again to Davis is now oh and uh, here comes butcher it's three wide into the into the griffith's bend and um lennon has been mugged either side by the two thr sierras he'll not be pleased about that and now he's coming back of course at butcher up the hill it's not going to happen so lennon after all that hard work has lost the position back once again so that's bad up there for gary lennon because uh, chris butcher has not pitted guys and he was running in fifth place after the opening couple of laps, Orban has not pitted. He's running in 10th place at the moment, pretty much where he's been all race long. And this Nielsen has not pitted. He's in 11th place, as high as he's been all race long, pretty much. Jay Adji has pitted, so that's why he's all over the back of Anders Nielsen. Jay Adji has been fighting with Matteo Orban most of this event, so he'll be looking to get back towards that particular battle. It's about 13 seconds off, in fact, actually, with just um, five and a half laps to go, so uh, not too good for him there. Ockerkunt has been run by that play position all race long, has not been into the pits, I believe. Jeff Dobbing has been into the pits. I think he, he, think he pitted, actually, in the first lap. We saw that. I don't know what happened to him, but he pitted on the first lap, and he has not pitted since then. Tristan Clark, I don't think he's pitted. Neither has Kevin Enderman. 
and in Bernard, Tony Matthews, and Lee Parr, of course. I think he has been able to repair some of that damage. And <laughs> battered and bruised BMW 635 we saw involved in that huge, huge accident earlier on. So Matthews and Bernard, again, inseparable on track. It always seems to be the case. Whenever Matthews and Bernard race, they're both in the same car, of course, which helps, but they're so well matched in terms of performance. Always entertaining to watch as uh, Bernard trying to hold off Tony Matthews. I think Tony's actually had a little bit of the... Uh, the upper, upper hand over his uh, very good mates this season so far. So they're in 18th and 19th. Of course, we lost Andy Oakley to that huge, huge accident and Robert Wiesenmuller to a mystery disconnect for him. But leading the race is Eric Devine and the great performance has been so far. Only, only five and a half, uh, four and a half laps to go and uh, he's been serene, I think is the word, which is unusual for uh, Mr. Tevite. <laughs> No, definitely. I think he's definitely doing a very good job. And obviously, we, st we did say at the beginning, if there's a, there'd be anyone who would be able to, you know, be, be make it make themselves a third winner compared to either Tavite or Talborg. And I think really we've been proven the answer to that is no, because of course Tavite has really streaked away and taken the advantage. Of course, he took pole position. He took the lead back at the end. Of well, the he's first got a lap second a lap faster than, than second place on average. Look. Yeah, that's a very good point. In fact, he's at, at this rate, he's actually looking to go at, 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 more at least over, just, just over a second. So he's it's stunning, stunning, really. It really is. It's a fantastic he's performance. Good. It is. And obviously, we have to say again, remember this lad is only 14 years old, Eric Tavart, and he's actually leading this race by, well, you, suppose you, could, you could say a country mile, I suppose. It's 16.8 seconds. That is a pretty huge gap to Eunice Right. Well, Eunice look where Rybio Tavart is, and look behind. where Rybio is. And look, and more, point, look, more importantly, look where Tolborg is. Tolborg yeah, well, the gap was 1.9. So Rivio's made it made a mistake, and 0.7 is the gap now. Ignore the uh, the ghost of Eric Devine disappearing off the timing again. But uh, Tallboy is just 0.7 behind Rivio. He's made a 1.2 second error at some point in that sector. So Tallboy is hunting. And Tallboy, I think, will definitely want to get himself into second place. I think, obviously, that unless something major, major happens to Eric Devine, I don't want that to be a complete curse at all. And uh, but I think Tallboy. He's like, he's, he's second in the most that we go for, so I think you want to try and get, you want to end this on the highest possible note. You won't be able to get a win unless the unthinkable happens and something happens to Dwight. But second place will be, good, I think, will be very satisfactory for him as he's there close right across the back of oh, Rivio's car. Rivio is uh, really is close. It's losing I mean, grip. You can see it. You can see it losing he grip. He's under braking. It's really struggling actually. He's struggling into the chase there, and he had to get on the brakes twice actually into that particular corner. And Dwight, that's, I don't that's a good corner this time around though. That's nice from uh, Rivio. But of course now Torwalk. Has the draft, and uh, Rivo is going to have a battle in his hands here to hold him off for four laps, which is, uh, may I remind you, 24 kilometres. And uh, 100, and, uh, no, in fact, it's not 112. <laughs> I can't do my, uh, I can't do my maths. It's at uh, 92 corners. Head up now through Griffin's Bend once again, a little bit over the curves on the exit. You can see, I, I don't, don't believe either, either of these guys have pitted, have they, these two? I don't think they have. No, they have not, no. to the trips. So these two essentially are just, are just basically, it's all been all about time management for these two. It looks as though that Tolborg and that Supra has been able to manage his an awful lot better than Rivers, with all due respect, as they head up now over Reed Park. And someone parking, oh. that was close to Tolborg. I think he may have just nudged the wall on the exits of the car, got a little bit snaky. Now to Reed Park and someone Park. A lot of G-forces on that car as you head through that left-hander in real life. The car bottoming out almost now through over McPhillamy's. As you see, Torwell just poking his head out, just knows, but just a second, just to let Rivio know he's there, getting ever closer under brakes through the S's. And these two are close up right, right up as well. Now, McGregor looked like he was, I had no hope of getting back to that fourth place, but um, suddenly in the last couple of laps, it's really closed up, so we've got two battles on track at the moment to watch out for. Yeah, de yeah most definitely. So obviously, Junt and, Mc and McGregor are battling for the best of the rest, but these guys are battling for the final two podium spots behind Dwight. They're basically looking to try to get the last two spots on the rostrum. Rivo is slightly sideways on the exit for us there, but now down the back straight. Tobolk has that fantastic toe as they head down the straight. It's now going to be Toyota Power versus BMW Power, and it looks like it's Toyota Power's winning. He's pulling alongside on the outside. They go over the crest towards Boris towards the chase. And I think Tobolk will sweep around the outside, and he does into second place and easy pass him for the champion Jesper Tolborg to take second place and he gets one step high on the rostrum and I think unless as I said unless something absolutely dramatic happens to Eric Dwight I can't see even Tolborg reducing a, a 19.4 second gap in two laps because that is practically impossible so that's not yeah, uh, it's, th th it's three laps in fact it's three laps in fact but it's still impossible it's not going to happen impossible yeah Unless Tavait makes a huge, huge error, all he has to do is just keep his head and he'll take his third win of his TPS career and his third win of the season as well. So that's fantastic stuff for him. In fact, before this season, he never had a podium in the Turin Pro Series. So uh, he's come good in this season, very, very definitely. 
So Rivio in third now, unfortunately for him, but he's still on course for his second podium of the season, his second podium in a row, and his second at TPS podium also. But Junta and McGregor very, very close together. I think McGregor got side was out in that first corner there. McGregor was running a comfortable third, actually. Uh, and, but he's, he's definitely, the strategy of pitting is definitely not the strategy to be on, it, it, it would seem, Chris. At uh, Chris. Scott, even. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking Wood Wiss and, and Chris Butcher yeah. at the same time, and no, Chris came out. <laughs> Apologies for that one. <laughs> that, that's not a problem. Um, no, I, I think that it, it depends on how the strategy works. Uh, yeah, I think pitting, I suppose, has worked at least for the top four, I suppose, at the moment. Well, McGregor, McGregor was ahead of Jesper Torborg before he pitted. D d he was. And look at him now, he's 14 seconds back of him still. It j I think it must be just how these guys are handling the fact that how, how, how the tyres are, how Mount Panorama, how the circuit is affecting the tyres as well. I think obviously this must be a circuit where if, if you're kind to the tyres, then they'll, they'll, they'll give back to you just as much as you put into them. If, you're, if, if you don't look after them properly, then it, it'll, it'll come back to bite you in, uh, bite you in, the, in the behind. <laughs> later on in the race. And we are past Watershed, so it's not too bad. Yeah, I, I, was, I, was trying to find, I was trying to find the best way to say without being too obscene, and behind was <laughs> anywhere like a fight. Um, but I think time, maybe people have just misjudged the, um, the strategy rather than... Poss yeah. Uh, misjudged I misjudged the wear, because Ross McGregor is the type that will never wear his tyres that much. He's a fantastic on his tyres, in fact, actually, like I said you know, before. I think he's just misjudged in what the best strategy is to do, and uh, it's not uh, been good for him. So he's back to fifth, when he should really be perhaps in second, you know, perhaps in second. Definitely in third and, and, and near Rivio. So, I mean, Jay Aji, in fact, also, well, was battling with Matteo Ban. Look how far he's behind. He's 13 seconds behind him still. So, we're seeing that uh, pitting is, is negligible, really, isn't it? It is. I, th I think maybe people like Ross McGregor may have taken one or two liberties with the. Oh, oh Chris! God. Oh, that's Chris in the wall. Uh, that, and, and Chris in the wall what, quite hard and crow. Oh, Jay comes back. I uh, tell you what, that is a carbon copy of what happened to Toby Davis exactly a year ago at this circuit. He's pretty much done, and Toby Davis right into the S's there. And uh, it has I, a puncture also as well. Oh, yeah, that's, that's lucky to make that. Back yeah, that bit. looks to be. I'm trying to see which wheel. That, it, it's a, it's a rear. Yeah, they, no, are, they no, see no, the spark. No, is it, is it, is it a front I'm left? I'm trying to see if it's a front left. I thought for a second it was a rear punch as, as, as the way that yeah, so did I. Maybe it's got both. <laughs> uh, maybe, or even that, or maybe could be suspension down. It's got like no, just the front. It looks like. Just, just the front. Like it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you see the front see, flattened yeah, you down. The, yeah. You can, yeah, you can see the front left is kind of just it's, it's down on its front left. Well, he wasn't a no stop strategy. Now he's on a one stop strategy. Yes, indeed. Uh, obviously, it's an unscheduled. Oh, one stop strategy. You can see the car is pulling violently down that front straight. Obviously, it must be a result of uh, whatever happened there. And look at that. He's struggling to get that car through the car through ch through the chase. And yeah, you, there, that's not really working. In fact, look, oh, he's almost gone. Oh, he's gone and very don't wide. spin in front of poor Jeff Dobbing. Je here comes Jeff. Je here he comes. Uh, and uh, it's, it's okay. Miss, there we does go. He miss him? Yeah, th yeah, he will. And Butcher, it's so, gets sorry about that camera work, the guys. I just wanted to give the anticipation of whether he uh, actually hits well, you or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I think Butch is just worried about if he can get into the pits, if he can break. There we so go, he's, he's in. He's got no days in now, so that's. Well, don't go too fast, Chris. You're not getting the car stopped. Oh, uh, Auckland's into the pits also, as well, look. Yep, yeah, last So, what's happened to it. him? Auckland is way down the field, so he's had a big accident somewhere, also. He was actually ahead of uh, Kevin Enderman, I'm pretty sure, and Christian Clark, so. Yeah, that's. Something's that's happened that's to Port Auckland. Yeah. He's dropped in behind Lee Palmer, who we saw have that huge accident. That's that's an elongated stop. It's uh, that is definitely something that's happened to him out on circuit. But I think he He's still there. Look. The so that was obviously a hefty whack at whack of the wall, a hefty whack of someone else he's taken. But uh, on to the oh, final oh, oh. note. Yeah, the, the final up, right. Life footage. This is life footage here. We're seeing Eric Dwight heading up towards Murray's corner for the penultimate time, and well, he's been oh <laughs> well. <laughs> Is, 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 is he likes to give us a bit of entertainment, doesn't he? It, um, it wouldn't be a tight performance without one of those things. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it's, it's, I think he's probably just making sure that, as to be consistent, he makes a small error just before he finishes the race, just to make sure that it's you know, just to let us know that. <laughs> let us know. It no, is actually Eric Devine driving the car. It, yeah. And not Stoffer Van Donner. Let us know that. that's <laughs> Not everything goes perfectly, just as it usually does. So we're just going to make a small error, just end the race, just to make sure it kind of just clears everything to confirm that is actually Eric's bike driving the car. Um, of course, if you guys are familiar with Stoffel van of course he is a uh, he's been very successful not in, not only in touring pro series. He's been a, I believe he's been an ATCC champion, hasn't he, uh, Stoffel van Dorn. And, well, uh, uh, ATCC is part of Touring Pro Series, so... Well, well, well there we go, he's, 80, <laughs> he's, been, he's been a Touring Pro Series champion in the ATCC Series. Indeed he has, yes. And, uh, of course, he's now moving on to bigger and better things in real-life racing, of course, along with the fact he's also raced in Formula Sim Racing. Uh, he's moving on to bigger and better things. He's <laughs> oh, and uh, Oates a bit of celebration here from him. Yeah, I think he's playing around a little bit here. I think he's... Uh, although he, 
doesn't want to take t this. Uh, Bathurst is not a circuit you want to take too many liberties with. I think he's taking quite a few liberties on this last lap, so he's got to be very careful as to where he decides to hang the tail out of this ro of this rover. Yeah, don't hang your tail out down here because it's not no, the place to hang the tail out. No, definitely not. And unless he's feeling rather D1 Grand Prix-ish, I don't think he wants to try and he's going to uh, do that. Anytime now, soon. now we can do this. There we go. That, that's it. it. There we go. So, yeah, it's um, impressive stuff from Twite. And as I said, I was to say it again. The lad is only 14 years old, and it's been an impressive, impressive um, run from Eric all race. In fact, all, I suppose all season. All season. This He'll finish second place in the championship. Absolutely. And, of course, this will be, this will be his, uh, his third win of the season, his third ever Touring Pro Series win. So it's quite fitting that three race victories in the, in the Touring Pro Series in the, uh, in, into, and also in the World Touring Masters. It's been fantastic to... Uh, having to take those victories. Uh, nothing else has really changed behind the positions we can see, so really, we're going to watch this man come in. Oh, if we can get it stopped for the chase. He does just about, but uh, Dominic so it's been a, tonight, and, a wonderful uh, performance, hasn't it? And uh, he's going to win the final ever race with this mod and with these cars, and that will put him down in history. Eric Tveit is going to take a hat-trick of wins this season. Three wins for Tveit, four for Torborg. Tveit is going to win the final race. <laughs> he goes into the grass. It's Eric Tveit style all the way. Well done to him. He flashes his lights and delights. He's absolutely mulled this field by over or almost a Including second a lap one. here today. And yes, but is going to take second place. And of course, he will cement his place as the Touring Pro Series World Touring Masters champion. The only driver ever to retain a title. I think Tobias. And that is yes, Torborg, Fantastic stuff. I think Tobias uh, is getting a spot of donuts. I think yes, he, yes, he has. He's done a, done a few there just at the front. Just and why not celebrate? Is uh, Yunus Rivey has come through to take the final podium spot on the on the rostrum and just behind that was very close between Junta McGregor. McGregor. Yeah, Yun, Yun held off McGregor. Yeah, McGregor got up no. to him and uh, the things couldn't seem to get past him and the gap was 0.6 in the end even with that uh, higher uh, tie wear. And oh, and here's yeah. a Ferrero. Oh, he comes down the final corner. Oh, oh and the fire. Davis went for the position doing? on Ferrero, and if he's if he's sensible, he'll just let Ferrero get, no, get going is again. He gonna, oh, <laughs> oh, dear me. Ferrero, get going. Come on. Get no, going, get going, get going. Uh, no, Before the come. Is he going to let him go? Yes, he, he will. He's going to let him go. That's yeah, sporting that's, stuff. That's fair. Well, Ferreira got a panicked a little bit there. and uh, <laughs> Oh, just about got it going again. So, <laughs> Davis and Ferreira across the line. 67. <laughs> eighth eight place, eight. Matteo Orban. Oh, there's a bit of panel beating oh. there for uh, Bruno Ferre Salsa Ferreira's uh, mechanics. Ninth place, Gary Lennon. He'll be pleased with that in the end. Qualifying in 15. Tenth place for JRG. Eleventh place. It's going to be Anders Niels. In fact, where he oh. qualified. And uh, he celebrates also as well across the line. And that battered, actually, uh, Holden Commodore. 12th place is going to be Jeff Dobbing, who's been a stalwart of the World Touring Masters. In fact, actually, it's great to see him in racing, of course. 12th place for him. 13th place will to be Tristan Clark. I'd be pleased with that, actually. He gets himself a handful of points. Flashes lights across the line. 14th place is going to be Chris Butcher. After a torrid race, eventful race, I would say. 15th place is going to go to Kevin Enderman. So he's second in the, in the Skyline race. And uh, 16th place, Andy Bernard. He's beaten his friend and, uh, and uh, close rival, Tony Matthews, that 16th place. And Lee Palmer was one lap down in 18th with 19th place going uh, to... It was, we just see him actually in the, in the garage. <laughs> to uh, Andy Oakley, of course, 20th place. <coughs> to Robert Wiesenmuller. So a fantastic way to end an era, Scott. It is, yeah. I mean, I, I, I myself, I'm ashamed to say I haven't really seen very many World Touring Masters races, but I'm a, very, I said, I'm not, I'm a huge fan of the Group A Touring Car uh, formula as a whole. And uh, I think it's great that, obviously, you know, Touring Pro Series has been able to put on a fantastic display of, of these cars over the past four seasons of racing. And, of course, the now the question is, of course, what, you know, what, what next for World Touring Masters? Where's the future? Where's the future lie? Ah, I see, yeah. That, that, that is the $64 million question, and the drivers will find out in uh, the, the pretty near future, next couple of months. So uh, I make I sure you uh, subscribe to TuringProSeries.com. Yeah. I have an idea, possibly, of where it, direction it could be going, but uh, oh, oh, we'll, uh, pray we'll tell Scott. I've, I have a I have a feeling that uh, I've, I don't know why. It, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm a feeling that uh, the direction may include the letters D R M. But uh, apart from that, who says it'll uh, be on R factor? Eh? Who says it'll be on R factor? Very true. So very true. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes with the driver interviews.
Hello and welcome back to the World Touring Masters. This is the final ever event with the Touring Masters mod and we've got the driver interviews to come up for you now. So that without further ado, we'll, we'll speak with the winner of that race, Mr. Eric Tervais. What a great performance there from you, Eric. Thanks. Um, that qualifying lap, uh, just, well, both of those qualifying laps, and that's superb stuff. Did you think you could go that fast? Under pressure? Yes. Yes, I did a point three early on the practice server, and I just really love the track and the car combination. It's just fantastic. Yeah, you've, you've loved that car all through the uh, the seasons you've been driving it. It's three seasons you've been driving it for now. I mean, uh, I mean, how much joy has this this mod given you? I would say it's the best for our factor, enjoy wise, deep racing wise. I just love it. And how sad are you to see the back of? Uh, that lovely Demon Tweaks rover. Aww. <laughs> so, there you go. Aww, is the assessment uh, from Eric. To fight. Well done in your uh, race today, Eric. That's a superb performance. really was. And uh, three wins a season, really a breakthrough season for you in the Touring Pro Series. And uh, good luck in future seasons also. Thanks. Uh, we have a quick chat. We haven't got Jesper Torbuk in here, unfortunately. We'll have a quick chat with uh, Toby Davis, who has become synonymous, really, with World Touring Masters uh -huh. and uh, the Touring Pro Series. Yes, in the past four seasons, you've raced. Uh, I think you only missed two races, in fact, in the uh, in the entire yeah. time of World Touring Masters, and you've always raced in the in the Sierra Cosworth. Are you sad to see the back of that? Very much so. I'm I'm sad to um to miss Chris coming in at the last minute and going Sandeep, and uh, we're having <laughs> to provide him hours of hard work <clears throat> worth of setup, and uh, that's the overriding <laughs> memory I'll have actually is uh, is delegating setups out to Chris mainly. And what, what are your, your best memories of, uh, of, of, of this particular mod and, the, and this series over the past four seasons? It taught me a lot of things. Um, obviously, it was the first series I did in the Touring Pro Series as well. Um, and it was, you know, the racing's always been fantastic. And there's, it's just easily the most fun mod that I've ever driven. And uh, it'll be sad to see it go. But um, I think it is time to move on. And there are better mods out there graphically and... Uh, physically and sound wise but as a fun factor it's the best mod that we've had for a while and uh, it, in fact in my opinion the best ever as Eric says so it'll be sad to see it go. So thank you Toby and uh, uh, congratulations on your result today uh, notwithstanding your little bump with uh, Bruno mm -hmm. uh, at the final corner but uh, all, all uh, no, fa no harm no foul of course Cheers. and congratulations on your wins of course in the, uh, in the, in the previous seasons in this particular, in this particular series. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Scott you've got a couple of drivers to talk to also. I have. Uh, I think we'll start off with Chris Butcher, if he's there. Chris, um, you had a, a pretty up and down race in that um, last event here at Bathurst. Um, you also had a pretty uh, unfortunate accident with a couple of laps to go. Just talk to you what happened there, because it looked as though it was a, a pretty similar accident to what happened to Toby last year, just minus the Fanta caps. <laughs> yeah, um, rinsed rear tyres is, is what happened. I thought I could go the uh, race distance without pitting. Um, it turned out I couldn't. So that's what happened there, really. And uh, of course, your experience with World Touring Masters, you've, you've, again, you've I'd, I'd say, I haven't followed myself, so I'm, I would say you probably had some f f rather, I'd say, mixed results. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But um, again, are you are you someone who's an advocate of World Touring Masters? Are you sad to see it go? Definitely, yeah. Um, not so much this season, to be honest with you, but. Um... Um, on, on the whole, yeah, definitely. Um, it's like with Toby, it's the league that got me into touring pro series, and it's it's taught me quite a lot of um, racing in a league as well. Um, and it's one of the most fun cars to drive as well. I mean, the Sierra has got a lot of character, I feel. Um, but yeah, definitely sad to see it go. But um, looking forward to the challenge of the new mod if uh, if WTM continues into the season five. Absolutely, and we'll look forward to seeing you race in that series. So thanks for that, Chris, and uh, commiserations on today, but uh, well done on, on your achievements uh, in World Touring Masters throughout the past four seasons, so well done for that. Thank you very much. And uh, I have a, have a very quick chat with our fourth place man today, which is David Junt. David, um, pretty decent race for you today. It's, it's rather, you got yourself into one or two scraps, but on the whole, it was a pretty just pretty solid drive to fourth place. Just talk us through your 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 high points in that race, because right at the end, you had a nice little bit of a scrap with Ross McGregor. You managed to hold him off, but uh, on the whole, pretty controlled and pretty uh, pretty calm. Well, maybe from the outside it looked uh, controlled and calm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yeah, if you if you said before uh, the race would finish uh, fourth, I'd say, no, oh, you're mad. Uh, I'm not going to finish fourth. There's at least six cars that passed me. User was moved to but your channel. 
but right at the moment, which when the train formed up in front of me, uh, I've seen a chance to stick with them because just before the race, I decided to go um, uh, zero stopping as well because I wasn't sure if I really should try that. And then, well, I've managed to escape the robots, the recent little spin. So yeah, thank you, Rob. Um, I've already passed though because he had a, had a sideways moment. I was just trying to hold on with uh, trying to hold Jasper a bit and get get finally get get past Butcher because he could, couldn't do it for so long time. And it was a bit unfortunate for him as he went over the curb and well, we yeah, are close one for Toby behind us and. From there on, it was just trying to, to stay calm, take the lines, uh, bring the car through the corners. And when I saw that Ross went pitting, I thought, well, it's, 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 a, it's a, um, a fast pit, so he will be probably trying to catch me. And so it was. And User left your channel. I didn't think I could do it, but I've just managed to hold him off. And it was a very good battle. And um, hats off to him. So uh, th thanks, David. Very well done on your, your result today, of course. And you've been uh, uh, pretty synonymous, of course, yourself with the World Touring Masters over the last few seasons. So congratulations on your fourth, fourth place today. You must be very pleased with that, actually, in the final rival race with this particular uh, mod. So we've got a, a word with another couple of drivers here. Uh, Brutus House Ferrari, you've only really joined us for this season, really, but uh, you've, you've really been a factor in this season so far. Uh, see, the, the whole season, actually. The season's now ended, obviously. Um. Yeah, I think uh, my pace been, it has been basically reasonable throughout the whole season. I've been around the top 10, so yeah, it's been a good season for me, actually. And how have you enjoyed the cars? Um, tricky to drive, but very fun. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how has that 635 uh, been treating you? Um, it 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 was good. It it was good. It was one of the better Hendrick cars, so I can't really complain <laughs> when comparing to something like a Holden. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you to uh, Bruno for your your quick word. There, also going to have a uh, a quick word with Jeff. Uh, Jeff, you've um you've raced this series for I think uh, two seasons, right? And um, I don't think you're in season season two, but for season three and four, you're definitely there for for uh, most of the campaign. And uh, you've driven a couple of different cars, the uh, the Sierra and the uh, the 635. Which one did, did you prefer? Uh, started in season two, but yeah. Um, oh, I you did. Yes, yeah, sorry, Jeff. I do apologize. Yeah, well, you, you've driven the Sierra and the and the 635, haven't you? So yeah, which one have you have super preferred? Season, of course. Uh, the 635 for me, it, it was the best all rounder. Um, you know, it, it was, it's been really good all season, to be honest. I've just had um, a couple of silly little incidents on the way through, and um, that's obviously hurt me in the points. But, yeah, had a lot of fun with the car, and I had a lot of fun battling back through the pack as well, today included. Uh, if you if you had have had to have your time again, would you have picked the same cars? Um, yeah, probably. I think I was always going to start with the um, Sierra Cosworth. It's such an iconic car, so that was always going to be the first choice uh, on season two. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, we'll, quickly, we'll have a quick chat to um, Mr. Anders Nielsen, of course, yes. who is a, a legend of <laughs> World Touring Masters, um, of course, for his Puki Koei ex exploits. Um, you've always been in, well, pretty much always been in that, um, that, uh, uh, that uh, Holden Commodore, of course. Raw Steel and Sex Appeal, as Keith Lights call it. Uh, the, the, the Herbie Calypso, and of course, you carried it on into the World Super Tech series of the same, uh, same livery. It, it's been kind to you, hasn't it? Yeah, it's... Season Not so much this season, perhaps, but in no, previous this seasons. No, season has been tough. Uh, I forgot how hard the car was to drive, actually. The season two was good. This one was fun, but it was hard. And the competition was just awesome this season. So, But I had to be there for the last season. <laughs> yes. Really, so. And, uh, I mean, the, the Puki Koei event mm. must, 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 must rank as your favorite in, the, in race two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, both of them, actually. Even if I got... The crash in the first one. I think that was the, my two best races, I think. And uh, the fight with Ben Crooks at Salzburg Ring also was... Oh, yes, I of course. Remember. That was a wonderful, yeah. wonderful fight yeah. that was as well. So those, those people who wonder what we're talking about, you can go to our YouTube channel and uh, type in World Terrain Masters 2 or WTM2 and you'll find uh, the races Anders is talking about and the great races they were also. Thank you to Anders for your word there. Uh, Lee Palmer. Lee, you've uh, been around a long, long time in the Touring Pro series. A bit of a uh, bit of the furniture now. Um, how have you how have you enjoyed your time in the uh, 
in 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 the WCM. Of course, you did had the M3 for most of most of the time, but now you're in the 635. Which have you preferred? Uh, definitely the M3. Um, I've had an awful time in the 635 both seasons. I've had it. Um, the fondest memories I've had of the earlier seasons with the M3, really. And uh, I mean, this season's obviously been a bit more difficult for you. But what's your your favourite moment of uh, of World Touring Masters? Uh, mine, I'd actually go back to season one um, with the Nordschleife event. Um, oh, didn't I crash in front of you in that particular event? Yes, I think you did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh, uh, what exactly made that so special? That uh, Nordschleife event. Uh, I can't really remember. I just remember it being quite a fun race to do. <laughs> Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> I don't think I got a particularly good result. I just quite enjoyed the car, though, and it's quite good fun. And uh, of course, you are one of the cars in the original World Touring Masters. Trevor, in fact, bumping over the curb at, uh, at Fuji. So uh, you're famous in World Touring Masters uh, circles there, Lee. Okay. <laughs> so um, anyway, I think you're also going to build up a bit of that as well. So uh, Andy Bernard also, we'll have a quick word uh, with Andy Bernard and uh, Tony Matthews, of course, because they're inseparable as persons. I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly that they're, uh, they're two people. They're probably joined at the hip. Uh, Andy, you've fought season long pretty much with uh, with your friend Tony. I mean, how has it been for you? Oh, yeah, I've absolutely loved it. Uh, no, we're not joined at the hip, but Tony's my setup man. Um, the beauty of this is for me, we, we, we've never been the quickest, but we've come on and we just enjoy racing it so much. It's such good fun. But um, hopefully we'll have something just as good next year. And uh, what's your, your favourite moment? What's your standout moment of uh, WTM? Um, I think tonight it was just me and Tony. We were battling neck and neck most of the way around. It was a really good race. Although we were near the back, or at the back, um, we had a great race. Really good fun. And, and Tony, uh, what, sh- what was your greatest moment of uh, WTM? Do you agree? Uh, probably last year when you'd like and meet uh, Mad Max. <laughs> 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 I did better this year because I, I didn't put hardly any scratches on it. I got round and I was the car I handled much better than last year's car. Yes. Um, much, much better. But yeah, I loved it. Um, yes, it's it's your car that, was definitely not Mad Max this year. It was very pristine, no. your car at the end of the races, I noticed. Yeah, it was. It's, <laughs> a, it's a shame that we didn't have such a big pit as uh, previous races because um, we would have had a few battles. But me and Andy had a good, pretty good race, I think. So thanks, of course, to, uh, to Andy and Tony for uh, their uh, service, I guess you could say, in, uh, in, uh, in the World Touring Masters history. I think we'll have a quick word with Matty or Ban, actually, just before we go. Uh, Matty, you joined, of course, um, at Touring Pro Series quite late in, uh, in the V8s in 2012. And then, of course, you joined this series as well. I mean, you, you seem like you've loved it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this was a pretty good season. Uh, I managed to join for the last season. I, I really loved it, and uh, this final race was was uh, quite fantastic. I had a great battle for both guys in front of me. Uh, I think uh, shame that uh, this is the last season, but um, I can't wait for the next one. And how was that Volvo treated you? Uh, I, I chose that car because. Uh, Quite handy, and uh, I, I can save more tire than with other cars. I think that's because it doesn't uh, he doesn't go around corners very fast. <laughs> he got no tire wear, <laughs> of course. And yes. uh, I think Toby wants to wants to have a, qu- a quick final word. Thank you, Mate. Sorry, uh, Toby wants to have a quick final word um, yeah. at the end. I just wanted to say uh, it's been an absolute privilege being able to run um, this series in the final season. But um, Ryan doesn't give himself enough credit half the time. I think everyone here would appreciate the fact that he's put a lot of effort into the Touring Pro Series in general over the past couple of years. And uh, this all kind of started with the V8s and the World Touring Masters originally. And the World Touring Masters has always been his baby and the mod itself is his baby, you know, um, altering it and making it work. So um, I'd quite like everyone here to just um, just quickly say thanks um, to Ryan. And uh, I'm sure we'd all appreciate the fact that he's put in a lot of hard work. So thank you, Ryan. Right. Amen to that. Definitely. Well, thank you, guys. And thank you, Toby, for that. You kiss ass. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in, in all seriousness, thank you, Toby, for that. Uh, the, the, a lot of effort does go into it. But um, that is the end of an era. No more Indeed. Touring Masters, more for the World Touring Masters, but we will have a World Touring Masters Season 5 just with a different mod. So uh, lots of excitement is going to build for that. Thank you to the drivers. 
Thank you to everybody who's raced in the World, in the world Touring Masters the past four seasons. Thank you to all the trap builders, of course. Thank you to ISI for our factor. Thank you to uh, all, the, all the viewers who have watched, of course. And thank you to people like SimSync Live Racers, Race Department, of course, who helped build us from the start, and uh, Inside Sim Racing, who uh, are now our supporters. So, uh, and also, of course, our, uh, our sponsors for this season, SimRacingHardware.com, who I had a bit of spiel about earlier on. Make sure you check out their website. So, thank you to everybody, and we'll see you in two days' time. In two days' time, of course, the World Touring Masters may have ended, but the Touring Pro Series carries on, and the next race is at um, World Supertech Series, and that's going to be a great race, isn't it, Scott? It is, most definitely. That should be really pretty good. Um, just before we go, I wanted to basically say something myself, is that um, it's more than likely uh, this will be my last broadcast, at least for, at least for the year, uh, for Touring Pro Series, and probably for, uh, for 2012, going to 2013. And uh, I won't take up too much time with this, but um, this year, for me, commentary-wise, has been pretty whirlwind. Um, I started the adventure, if you want to call it that, right way back at the end of February, beginning of March, with the GPBWC League, and have to give props to them, because it wasn't for them. I wouldn't be in this position, and I wouldn't have the aspirations to becoming a real-life commentator. So, um, really... I suppose it's the last time I'll be on air, so I wanted to give a, a quick few shout-outs. Again, not take up too much time. First of all, um, I have to give a shout-out to Liam Jenkins, because, of course, if I hadn't have originally contacted him, then I wouldn't be, be here talking to you guys right now. Um, shout, secondly, shout-out to everyone associated with GPWC. Um, again, those guys, are I still think they're pretty awesome. Um, you know, how it ended with them, I'm still a bit not happy about it, but it's a bit, a bit saddening, but less bad about that the better. I want to say thanks to Damien and everyone at Formula Sim Racing um, for taking me in and letting me be a part of the World Trophy and the World Series and also the World Championship. That's been fantastic. And I said, let me get on with it. Um, and finally, I want to say a massive thanks to Ryan and to Keith and to all of you guys here at Touring Pro Series. I think every single person I commentated with and every single person I've watched race, you are all absolute legends. And it would be an honour and a privilege to continue on with you guys for 2013. Because, you know, I think, you, I think as, as you know, yourself, Ryan and Keith have got big things for next season. So um, I'd be more than happy to be a part of it if you'd have me. But, um, yeah, thank you very much, guys. And uh, let's roll on 2013. Thank you. <laughs> thank you to Scott, and uh, thank you to, uh, again to everybody who has watched, and we'll see you, of course, in two days' time, and that's the World Supertech Series 3. You've got people like Keith Lee, Van Dorna, Davis, um, Calamies, Dave Allard, all kinds of ridiculously um, high-reputation names, so make sure you tune in for that's going to be a great event just before Christmas, and that's your early Christmas present from the Thrin Pro Series to you. We'll see you next time.